I was, uh, because we don't have sound, I was doing the sound effects for Wallet oh, Anvil's wow. video intro there. Hello! Welcome to High Rollers Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> Here on the Yogscast Twitch, also available on High Rollers D&D Twitch. I am your humble Dungeon Master. Mark Short Hughes. Stop that. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, I'm a hundred, humble dungeon master. Hundred rumbling. Hundred rumbling. Hundred rumbling. Hundred rumbling. <laughs> Welcome, friends. Time for more D&D action. Joining me this week, Chris Rock. Hey, it's Kim me. Richards. I like the turn that they did then. It's all reasonable. Rhiannon Gower. Hello. Uh, Katie is still on holiday. She yeah. took uh, last week and this week off. She was visiting New York. I think she's yeah, back yeah. but recovering from jet lag. So. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, friends, welcome. Welcome. To some Dungeons and Dragons time. Um, <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons time. Dungeons and Dragons time. Before we start, before we even talk about our sponsors this week, I want to say that it is four years of High Rollers today. Woo! Oh, four years. Yeah. Four years. We've Sweet been doing this four more years. Four, four more years. years. Four, four more years. years. I am happy Break to accept teams. another term as your, as your Dungeon Master. It's rigged. <laughs> Over a <laughs> throw. Over a <laughs> No, not allowed. Impeach. Kill her! <laughs> okay. um, no, so, but just a quick thing to say, thank you all so much, everybody who has supported us, who's watched the show, who's listened to the podcast, who's done fan art, who's made cosplay, who's made music, who sent us gifts, who has promoted the show to somebody else, who has done anything. Thank you for all of your support and love over these four years. I, you know, it's not a, a, a miss, it is not uh, a... Uh, Exaggeration to say that it has changed all of our lives, so thank mm. you very much. Uh, mm. Yeah. And the best. Most of all, thank you to our two sponsors this week. <laughs> yeah. For supporting us. Um, as Should've always, <laughs> the beloved, yeah. beloved D&D Beyond return as our regular sponsor, but also, as you saw at the beginning there. Don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> World Anvil have also sponsored us this week. Chris Trot, tell us about these amazing sponsors. Can you imagine the perfect world? <laughs> Because oh, I've safe. created it. Have, have you, you now? Yes. Luciander. Oh please, Sid, please feel free to scroll down. Oh, Let's see it. Gideon. Picture a utopic, vivid, peaceful world. What? Full of the perfect wow. ship. Look, I found this is labeled for reuse on Google Images. So That's I use that. It's the best. It's got turtles. Is that lady showing her There's a house bum? on one of them. Is that lady showing her bottom? It, she's wearing a thong. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's a little too loose. I don't know. Just bad. Anyway, I made this in minutes, and it's super really? easy. No, <laughs> minutes! Well, wait, uh, no. For example, I made the timeline, so click on the timelines, uh, just complete in the middle, the complete Lucianda. history. The complete history of Luciana. Yeah. Oh my so, god. And it's hard to read, so... <laughs> he actually did do this. Oh Martin Dismal era. Yeah, and then <laughs> Lucius like descends. And he arrives. He arrives. <laughs> uh, and truly <laughs> stuck at the landing. <laughs> And then he founded <laughs> Lucius's benevolent rule went from 4 LD Lucius descent to 124 LD. Oh uh, the founding of Elena Astoria, which is the perfect city. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an article oh, on that as well. Absolute peace. Basically, if I can do this, anyone you can, can make a world <laughs> on World if, Anvil. If you can Chris Strock can do this, anyone can. Can I just look at the character of Lucius Virianello in Elena Astoria, please? Yeah, it's a really big <laughs> image. I, I <laughs> probably should have cropped that one. But yes, it's Beauty, Beauty Grace. Grace. Wisdom. wisdom. Yes, yes. You can style Species it however you want. God. What? <laughs> died zero years He's old. He's immortal. Uh, Why did born, he die? Born into himself, he spoke of himself, thus was born. <laughs> he spoke his own name and, <laughs> and was, was born. Well, that's not, that's not too far <laughs> from <laughs> other religions. He died the perfect way. If a waterfall of gold could cascade on a mere mortal, it would look like Lucius's hair. <laughs> Thankfully, he is not. Wow. This is amazing. So, okay, well, you've made this, but what? What? so what is World Anvil for the people of the other So, you can actually sign up to World Anvil for free, like I did. Actually, I paid for it after a while because I want a different style. But <laughs> right. you can make articles like this in an entire world that's all linked together. You can go on the map of Luciander. You can make a map, put pins on it. They link to articles, which are like settlements. Oh, my God. That's so, awesome. you click in the middle one. I've done that as well. Ellen Astoria. There, there it is. Oh, wow. That's that kind of what it looks born. like. There's a full article if you want to see. That's really cool. Uh, but again, very what, cool. what makes this super easy to make a world, if you want to build a world for any system, it's system agnostic. Um, <laughs> it, it has all the boxes. So, all the things that I can never think Jesus. of, like demographics, mm -hmm. population. The inhabitants' denonyms. They're called the Elenials. 
right. <laughs> like, oh my god! It's very, it's very good for awesome. giving you the, that, the that structure and the guidelines Absolutely. to like build oh, something out. Wild. But feel free to check it out for free. Uh, there is a link, hopefully in chat. It's a Bitly link. World Anvil High Rollers. And uh, yeah, go check it out for yourself. They've kindly supported us today, mm -hmm. and it has a. It's really easy to use, clearly, because I've, I've made it. <laughs> you can go check I, out I, this as well. I have to say, I am impressed at the amount of stuff you've written. Yeah. Yes. I like, didn't want to write that much, but it, I just kept just going. You just took you over, the creativity you got in the zone. So, that's my pitch. There you go. If you want to include that into a roast, that's... I will keep it in mind. I mean, hell, if anyone wants to... But somebody else could campaign. use it in yeah. their yeah. campaigns, because it's now available on World Anvil, the right? Perfect, you can publicly share it. The perfect, perfect metropolis. Yeah. There you go. The perfect place. Well, thank you, World Anvil. Um, I've met the World Anvil team numerous times. Very lovely people. Yeah. Uh, go and go and check it out. It is a really cool tool, um, especially if you need some help in that kind of structuring and, and building your campaign out yeah. and adding detail. Plus, it's also that nice thing if you can share it with your players, so they yeah. can actually. I think you can even hide stuff from players, so it's like GM only. Yeah, there's secret notes and stuff like that. Oh, so you can actually cool. share it with your players. They could write up, so I could say like, you know, here's a Rois, and then Kim could write up all about, yeah. you know, uh, Bort and Sar. And you can stuff do like co-authoring as well, mm -hmm. so you can share it with someone else and give them very, access very cool. to certain things. It's thank highly you. flexible, customizable. Anything else I need to say? I think that's fine. But thank it you, well for itself. Thank you, well done, Phil. <laughs> yeah. There's even a hero creator, so. Yeah. Yeah. Art characters and stuff, it's a good cool. planning place for that sort of thing. Nice. Wow. And then DD Beyond. DD Beyond. What better way to run your fresh homebrew world mm -hmm. oh. than using DD Beyond? Yeah. The best fifth edition tool set for DD. Create characters fast and maintain them faster. Oh. Even uh, you can keep that one, Dean. To be honest, that's yeah. a freebie. <laughs> that was nice. That's Even create combat encounters for your party with the encounter builder, which Mark does use, uh, don't you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. It makes a I've been using fight. it a lot lately. It uh, factors in like yeah. the party size and level, so you know how hard it's going to be for them, which is really useful. Um, yeah. Obviously, yeah. you wouldn't create you wouldn't create yeah. a combat encounter for Elena Astoria because it hasn't had any crime Com or yeah, conflict yeah. since Zero. Lucius descended. So, but anyway, you can do that. It's a fantasy world, so you can, you can make what you want of it, <laughs> but just don't ruin it. Thank you. D and D Beyond. <laughs> Please check it out. Mm. Please check it out. Yeah. I've been using the Encounter Builder a lot, especially making custom monsters. Custom can, monsters. Yeah, it makes it really easy because you can just find a template monster, find an existing monster you like. Copy stats. And you just edit it and it's all done for you. So you just name it, change the names of stuff. Love it. That's pretty dang sweet, Mark. That's pretty dang sweet, isn't it? That's pretty dang sweet. Well, thank you very much uh, to our wonderful sponsors. Thank you very much. Merch. Uh, I believe that our January sale is still on at the moment. So you can get a ton of merch uh, uh, discount price over on High Rollers Fresh Merch. Trot is wearing, oh he's God. probably just ruined the microphone. <laughs> uh, he's wearing fine. a long sleeve top, so is Rhiannon at the moment. So there's the back yeah. and there's the front. It's needed today, it's cold. Um, we've got a bunch of, we got the t-shirts, mm. we got the long sleeve shirts, we got uh, the new dice, the yep. bronze dice. Loads of stuff's on there. Ooh. Hats and hoodies <clears throat> are not in the sale, but you can still get 10% so off by using cool. code High Rollers D and D. Yeah. Um, Kim also has a new shirt out, which I believe she's wearing today. Oh, look at my shirt! It's so cute, guys. New it's shirt for nice. Kim. Oh if you buy that, use code High Rollers D and D, yeah, so yeah. we get some money, please. <laughs> um, Fair. Uh, and then, lastly, just to mention, don't forget you can sub up over on High Rollers D and D if you want to get custom High Rollers D uh, D and D emotes. Nice. Um, use your Amazon Prime if you've got it spare at the moment. Um, we also have a Patreon, which we've been posting some stuff. If you want to get like close-ups of things like maps and yeah. you just post Ooh, up like the yeah. airship and stuff like that up on there. Trying to get um, a lot more supplementary stuff onto the Patreon. Mm -hmm. for for extra little goodies. Extra There's a goodies. few things coming up this week. And, and indeed, beyond. speaking of, we have a new stream. Yeah. Bonus oh. content stream starting up. Tell us about Chaos Twins. Oh, this Tuesday. Oh. It's Tuesday, it's like Tuesday. two days from now, 5 p.m. till 8 p.m. Like, no, not 5 till 8. It's 8, isn't it? We're starting at 8. I don't know. What? I think we're starting at like 8 o'clock. Around 8 o'clock. Like, <laughs> <8 'clock. laughs> Chaos Twins. Eight. Chaos! <laughs> it's a rain super. It's not what the fuck we want. <laughs> we're starting. Whatever! <laughs> um, Man, yeah, there's going to be uh, me and Rhiannon uh, playing Sonic Adventure 2. Very excited. We are going to spend so many weeks playing that game in the Chow Garden. <laughs> yeah. If, the Chaos Garden. Chaos Garden. <laughs> if, you, if you enjoy Tom and Rhiannon's crazy, crazy banter, make do. sure you check out Chaos Twins. Uh, be there or be square. <laughs> so I don't want to, it's going to be so good. I don't want to take up any more time of announcements unless there's something I've missed. Uh, Don't think so. Chaos Twins. Chaos Twins. <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> let's jump straight into High Rollers. Dun dun!
Hello, and welcome back to High Rollers. Last time, our party of adventurers destroyed the ILS, the illusory leadership system of Kalistar Bane. And the resulting explosion destroyed a large part of their airship, the Storm Chaser, as well as killed one of the crew members. Whoopsie. Let's Lucius revealed <laughs> some of the truth, but not all, to the airship's officers. And they began a slow descent outside the City of Glass, originally called the Kamina City. Here, the party met with Kaltane Rama Vorthir, a half-elf military captain who commands the disaster response force of the Sanzesian Commonwealth. His solaire, a sergeant, is Jamalia Princess Stonesworn, a Goliath. His force is small, and he reveals that the entire army has been placed here as something of a punishment for indiscretions and uh, poor behavior in the Sanzesian Commonwealth. Rammer also revealed a bit more information about the city itself, including the outer ruins and inner city of glass, known as the Glass Scar, as well as a mysterious guardian who appears at night wreathed in black wings. A bargain was also struck with Lucius, Rama would lend labor and aid to the party to repair their airship if the party allowed him to accompany them into the ruins so he could satisfy his curiosity and obtain some treasure. Heading into the outer ruins, the party tried to sneak past scores of feral guardians that have come here seemingly for some mysterious purpose and fallen prey to their decaying lifespans. The party were eventually ambushed and a battle ensues amid the ruins and fending off their attackers for now, the echoes of the sounds of battle reverberate around the city. Oh. And soon the unnatural howls and cries from the feral guardians elsewhere return in nature. There is more lurking out there. And that is where we begin today. You oh. have um, made good progress through the outer ruins of uh, the City of Glass. And you're still out in the actual ruins of the town. This is all like crumbling stone buildings. Um, you know, the vegetate, like the wood of like, you know, uh, the buildings has long since rotted away or like fallen into disrepair. Much of it is also overgrown by forest and, and plots. So um, you are actually in... The city. It's you are in the settlements. Yeah, imagine that you have this large city. Mm -hmm. um, the outer city, as Rama calls it, is basically just the ruin. It's like a normal city ruins, right? Like it's you know still impressive large buildings, but they've crumbled. They've been worn away by time and, and erosion and, and everything else. And the, the forest has slowly taken them back. Mm. However, at the center of the city and extending to the the very steep cliffs that jut out onto the the sea. Um, is what's called the Glass Scar, which they refer to as the Inner City. And this is the part of the city that was transformed by some weapon of Starbanes completely to glass. Um, any living objects, stone, buildings, everything was just transmuted into glass by this arcane weapon. Um, and that is where you believe you are heading to. The only person who seems to have any destination in mind is Sentry, who, as you have been making your way through the city, you catch glimpses of this angelic, celestial guardian, um, beautifully made, well-constructed, with these luminous, glowing golden wings, who gestures you. They never speak, or when they do, it's faint and whispered. Um, they rarely speak, but they, they kind of pull you down certain streets or gesture for you to head down in certain directions. Um, and so far, that seems to be your only clue as to where to go or what you're even looking for. Um, Do I see any of that? None of you. Are, no, nobody else sees this except Sentry. Okay. okay. Um, unless you have some sort of, like, unless you have been casting something like Sea Ethereal or anything like that, True no, Sight. Well, I was just wondering if cool. it was... Natural perception would pick no, up. No, this is entirely within Sentry's mind. Um, the outer city itself, the crumbling ruins, for the most part, they're intact, but as you step over them and as you kind of crouch and sneak your way through, you are careful as your boots, you know, like set a few stones loose. Uh, the stones hit the ground, the cobbled ground, and seem to echo. And the eerie silence uh, permeates the air. Rama, somewhat injured, uh, kind of looks around, um, seems to be checking. Uh, 
the coast seems clear for now. Um, I don't know where you need to be heading, but the inner city is, is roughly in that direction. So if we need to head there, then that's where we should go. Uh, you took a considerable amount of hits there. You Yes, my I will, uh, uh, perhaps when we find time to rest, I will try and repair my firearm, but uh, uh, I, I do have some healing uh, on me. I have a couple of potions, so. Uh, okay. We need to move. Uh, we did need everybody to... get hurt pretty badly in that one? No. Remember that Not one? Not once. I'm not too bad. Never raises her hand. Um, I think Ayla also is just like, mm, yeah, a little bit. Um, I'm just trying to, I'm thinking about doing a prayer of healing, but that's like 10 minutes, isn't it? I, is I, it? Yes, I mean, 10 minutes in the grand scheme of things isn't a huge amount of time. Can I do that while, like, walking, or? No, I think you have to be in place. So Ritualizing. Yeah, yeah. We can Maybe do it like hands. Uh, well, prayer healing is like it affects everyone. Oh, everyone. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Shall we find somewhere hidden so you can do that away from this? Yes. yes if we want to take any kind of uh, moment of respite, I suggest that we try and find somewhere that is off the beaten path. Yes, good idea. This, these, the streets, uh, the guardians. I'm sure still mainly patrol through them or move through them. Um, but if we can find uh, perhaps an old cellar or something like that, something underground, who might be. Okay. Better off. Um, okay. Sentry, have you been getting any inklings at all of the this herald that all the other guardians can see? <sighs> not, not from what I can see. Um, it's only been the the golden one, as far as I can see. Okay. Um, that sounds like as good a lead as any. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's find a place at least to. It's only for ten minutes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, if you want to find somewhere like that, I guess um, somebody in the party, doesn't matter who, um, probably it's going to be like two rolls. Somebody will need to make a survival check to find somewhere suitable to hide in. Um, and then uh, somebody should make a stealth check for the team. Hmm. Uh, a stealth check for the team. That won't be me. I can do the survival check. Sure. Uh, plus three on stealth. Okay. Same. But do we add our modifier, or is it just a straight No, 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 you, know, you add your modifier and stuff. Like, basically have one person take the lead in le leading you <coughs> to this place as somebody is searching as well. Okay. Um, can you quietly move your mic around, apparently? It seems to be not oh. picking up. Uh, quietly. I mean, it was stopped. <laughs> is this better? Anyway, uh, so you want to make the survival roll yep. sentry? All right. That's a 14. 14 on the survival, and then who wants to try and make a stealth roll? 18. 21. 21, okay. Uh, it does take some time for Sentry to find somewhere suitable, but Lucius kind of moving ahead of the group a little bit and kind of scouting things out, peering around, you make sure the coast is clear, gesture them forward, and you manage to eventually find you almost think maybe it was once part of like a, an indoor market. Um, it's like a covered building. The, the tarpaulin or the fabric that would have once covered it has long since been blown away or torn to shreds. Um, but there are these big stone archways that the canvas would have hung between. And there are these little tiny stone shacks or like little stone huts kind of all along this like little narrow corridors. And yeah, you kind of get the vibe that it's like a little indoor market. Um, there's probably even like some glass um, still above as well, like that forms like a, a barrier between some of these archways. Not transmuted glass, like original. No, this is like original glass, basically. It's all scratched and scuffed, but you know, it still is there. Um, yellowed, perhaps, as well by the sun. I got a retroactive question. Sure. When we were coming in on the airship and we saw the city of glass. Mm. You didn't get very close to it. You were coming in from another... Oh, okay. So we couldn't see, like, for example, we knew it was a weapon that created that. Well, you've, you've been told that. Yeah. You, you know that from history there lessons and an stuff. an obvious line of mm -hmm. fire. Yes. There's, it's almost like a cone. So it from starts at a fine point. No, from, from the land. From the land going out, out to... So imagine that the, the north of the city is where the sea is. The widest. So starting sort of at the midpoint of the city is this jagged cone-like scar where this weapon just basically... Cool. Cool. It's set off from within the city. It's from orbit, from, from above the city. So it started as a fine point and then it spread out. Spread out. Yeah. Cool. Like a cone. Awesome. Um, mm. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, and I think that Nova did some history research yeah. or Quill did on this. And it was basically, yeah, it, it, it's been recorded. It was an attack by one of Callus's battleships, some sort of arcane weapon. 
Um, it wasn't fired again. There's no other reports of this weapon. Um, but it certainly did the damage on Kamina City. Um, but yeah, you eventually managed to find like this little kind of tucked away little store that you can get inside and it seems quiet enough that you can probably take a moment here. Okay. Take 10 minutes or a short rest if you prefer. Uh, I mean, we could do short rest, but that's an hour. I do, a, yeah, if I do short rest, I get a spell back, spell slot back, but um, obviously I don't want to. Mm, it's an hour. Yeah, it's an hour compared to 10 minutes, so. Uh, I mean, I can, I can do this at level 3 and it's 3d8 plus 4. Do that. Healing sure. to everyone. Cool. Great. So make it so. Ten minutes. Boom. Uh, eight. Oh god, that's not great. Eight, eleven, plus four, fifteen health to everyone. Oh, nice. Thank you. That's not bad that's for not, everybody. Not terrible for everyone. Um, I've marked that. I will also mark for Rama as yeah, well. Now at half health. Half exactly health. half health. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nova okay. got. <laughs> The crap Pickle. kicked out of her. Yeah. <laughs> she was being beaten on by the guardians, while a lot of you were fighting. And I think mm. even the big guy hit you yeah. as well. So I got hit by everyone. Yeah, that's fair. Um, you also got you're tough. slapped you're by Ayla. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and that would have probably done most of the damage. <laughs> yeah, I'm missing a tooth. <laughs> <laughs> by taking the ten minutes, uh, the it's still maybe late afternoon. Um, you are currently in winter as a season. And you know it will not be long before night begins to fall. Um, you still are maybe only about halfway through the outer city. You still have a significant ways to go to reach the inner city. You know, the Kamala city was very large. You know, you're talking very, very large metropolis kind of city. Not like London big, but big. You know, it's going to take you time. And because it's so ruined and you're moving quietly, it's taking even longer to, like, get through these different streets and districts. Um, as you make your way through. But I'm assuming, do you just want to crack on, or do you want to take a moment to chat with each other, or? Uh, I think. Move on. Move on, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I guess, knowing that Sentry has some kind of guide, I guess it's more following Sentry. those leads rather than anything else. Okay. Totally fine. Totally fine. Yeah. And <laughs> you're seeing a celestial one, it's fine, that's a good one. Yeah. Not Brookstone, right? No. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> I'm sound of mind. Could a celestial be a Brookstone? <laughs> <laughs> Depends. As the sun begins to dip, you move through about another two hours, three hours into the city, and now nightfall is beginning to take over. And as night descends, the howls and the anguished cries of these feral guardians and the spirits begin to come out. Not all of them, <clears throat> you see them and they don't immediately attack you, at least not yet. <laughs> but you see them coming from the glass scar, walking as if, not going about their daily business, but looking for something. You see the first one, a young man, maybe, half-elf perhaps. And it's difficult to see them at night because these aren't just ghosts. You've all met spectres and spirits before. You've battled against them. There is a moment where you think it could be almost tangible because they appear to be made out of glass, the actual people themselves. Cool. Their skin is translucent but has that shine to it. There's a hollowness to even their spectral kind of visage um, as they make their way through. You can almost hear as they bend down the sound of glass breaking, but their form doesn't change. Just the sound that echoes out from them. And every time they move in a kind of, that isn't just a slow walk, they wince as if in agony and pain. Um, and can, they search around for things. Can you see through the glass skin into like a glass skull and things like that as well? Or is it literally just like a block of glass? It's, it's like the outline of a person. It, right. It's like if you formed the shape of a person out of glass. Yeah, okay. But there's nothing on the inside. Um, mm. Mm. So at night, they're almost invisible. You, you know, Rama kind of like stops you and like points at one. It's like, try and unfocus your eyes. Do not... Uh, let them blur slightly and it makes them a bit easier to see. Would that be more difficult for me? Yes. Yeah. With your current um, injury, yeah. with your eye missing, like you can barely, you can't even really see it. It just looks like just the environment. Right. Um, but Rama points out, it's like, 
My understanding, as long as we do not uh, encounter large groups of them, we do not interfere with them, we should be all right. Or draw any major attention to ourselves. What are they capable of? Ah, oh, well, I've, <laughs> the men that I know who have engaged them did not live, so I don't know. But uh, we've seen them occasionally wandering these outer ruins. They don't come out to the outskirts very often, but when we see them, we're quite careful to avoid them. Have they ever given chase after you? Are they aggressive? Not to me, but my men have reported that, yes, they can be. Uh, if you get too close to them, if they become aware of you, they might become interested in you. Um, sometimes they turn violent. Um, sometimes they are passive, They're just searching for something. Okay. It's something of a mystery. Um, lingering effects of whatever dangerous weapon was brought here, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, but the, the spirit doesn't seem to bother you. It just wanders past, creepily, quietly. Um, just the sound of glass breaking. Ugh. That's really cool. Now, damn, you I just realised Echo's only got one eye as well. So you wouldn't be able to use that. <laughs> you carry on, and eventually your journey into the centre has to come to a stop, because before you, at a large crossroads where a great junction would have existed, and you can see there are crumbled buildings on either side. Um, maybe this was once like a large open market, but now it is home to a very deep sinkhole and ravine where the ground has just collapsed and given way. Um, there are large stone columns that you think maybe would have once been the outer markers of the marketplace. They've fallen and have formed very crude bridges across the ravine, but they look... You would need to balance across them. These are not just like a large bridge you could cross. You're, it likes, it's like walking across a log, a tree log. Okay. The ravine itself, it's not unfathomably deep. Um, Quill looking down there with your good eye sight, you can probably judge it's maybe like 60, 70 feet deep. Um, you can see like parts of like basements that are filled in and crumbled in um, and it just seems to kind of form down into a point, just like a big split yeah. uh, down the earth. Okay. Um, it's very large though, it seems to stretch down this major uh, junction, this major street. You're either going to have to go around it, which will take time, or try and cross it somehow. What would you like to do? How wide is the ravine, sorry? Uh, the, it's, in terms of width, it's like 60, 80 feet, I'd say 80 feet across. Quite um, far. Another yeah. jump. <laughs> yeah, and okay. there's these huge, like, 100 foot tall columns that have... Um, it's like a large gate, almost, mm. that marked the entrance to the marketplace. Right. Quill, okay. with your astute vision, mm -hmm. could you see if there's any other footsteps on the columns first. Oh, if, anyone, see if else anyone else has been attempted there. this at least. Uh, I can check. That is more of a survival, searching for tracks is more of a survival skill. Turns out, proficient in it. Yeah, nice. uh, makes sense, you're a messenger, you're a, you know. Yeah, okay. Who is, does this kind of stuff. Uh, 16 plus seven, mm. 23. Mm. Wow, nice. bam. You see feet, I see, <laughs> full bodies. I see everything. You do. Oh. Sea tracks. Oh. Leading up to the columns, going across the columns, around this marketplace area. And with the, the result you got, it's not just feral guardians. You expect to see footsteps of these creatures. They're everywhere. You see their ragged kind of metal feet have almost clawed up the earth. But amongst them, armoured boots. Mm. Hmm. Actual... And these aren't ancient old. Some of them are very old. Some of these tracks like, must be a month or so old, but haven't been disturbed for whatever reason. There are two sets, so two individuals, that are within the last four days. Oh, cool. Within the last four days? Mm -hmm. um, and they go over the column or just around the market? They go over towards the inner city. On that, uh, with how many prints are going over this column, mm. like, can I, I guess I can surmise, like, that column is pretty sturdy. Yeah. If, um, oh, yeah, these are huge, these big columns. The difficulty would just be that it's, you know, they're quite thin still, like, you, it's, you're going to have to balance, more yeah. than And it's not that the really. columns go the whole way over, because, like, a 100-foot column is ridiculous. It's, like, these columns, like... There's maybe like a couple of them that are like 30 foot across and then there's a part of land still in the middle of the ravine and right. it like it's like bridges have been formed out of these broken buildings. Oh, like right. parts of a rooftop have collapsed and you can walk along that and 
it kind of so fills it in. Weird route we have to take. Yeah, but, but it's, it's a direct way that yeah. you can get across rather than going around uh, the city streets, basically. Um, so I can, yes, there's, there's definitely other people that have been here. There's what? Guardian tracks. That's uh, not possible. There can't be any more people in here. What? When did you send these other people into the city? No, we have not come into this out into the outer city since the first few months we were stationed here. It was it was deadly. Well, not too deadly for these people. These are but but they would have old. had to have come past me and my forces. There's, nobody has come this way in in months, decades. Are you sure there's no alternative? Apart from guardians, but guardians don't wear boots. C can 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 your forces d detect invisible c creatures? I no, I guess I guess that that's, we couldn't detect that. But I mean, you'd have to maintain a quite. Uh, my understanding is that spell does not last particularly long. For an hour. It could be they never they... left the city. They were there when you started your little camp, and. But then why did? You guys are quite quiet at that, like thinking internally. Or but... if they had a magic item that could make them invisible. Mm. Yeah, maybe. But like you said, maybe they were always here. Or have been here, and there's people inhabiting this city oh. of glass. We've not seen any signs of that, but but surely the, the the Commonwealth would not have they would have told us to come and rescue these people rather than just keep people out. Maybe they don't want rescuing. Maybe was there not a uh, strange, ambitious, strange. ambitious team sent from the main? A long time ago, yes, before we came, yes. A long, long time ago? Oh, yes, it was years ago now. Uh, this was when people would still try and come to these ruins to plunder them before, you know, they, we realised how dangerous it was with all of these guardians. Well, it could be someone managed to live among the guardians and the spirits somehow. Yeah, maybe. Um, do their footsteps look organised or do they look There's shambling? only two. There's only two footprints of these newer, fresher prints. Um, I guess. And I, in fact, I'm actually, one interesting it. fact. Right. One of the sets goes along the columns, the other one walks up to the edge, and then their tracks vanish. Mm. Seeing, <laughs> seeing the point they where <laughs> it's against the ravine, mm. can I like prod down into the ravine, see if there's any like surface there that. No. Okay. Uh, it's, it's like, it's not an illusion. Like, it's, it really right. is a ravine. It's okay. not fake. It's not an illusion or anything like that. Mm. Do Guardians have boots? Um, I don't think Sentry wears them, does she? No, they just sort of just they foot moldings, aren't they? Yeah, no. yeah, they wouldn't need to. They have like tabards and things, more to show their position, position. or their like yeah. role, but I don't think they need clothes. No. I assume the ravine is very old, right? It can't be less than four days old. Uh, I imagine caused when but, everything starts to rupture. But yes, the sundering, I imagine. Um, they could be shambling monstrosities of their former selves. Oh, mm. that's scary. <laughs> Unless these spirits are able to leave prints. They are made of glass, I suppose. Mm, I've not seen any armed ones yet, though. No. Either way, we need Very to get curious. across. I would... My apologies, I'm thinking out loud. Yes, either way, we need to cross. Yes. Um, that well, shouldn't be too hard. There seems to be a number of points that we can get across. Well, just in case. Guidance on whoever's going first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Rama will go first. He, he seems pretty adept at these kind of environments and balances along one of the columns. He jumps over to a, like a rooftop and makes his way across that and jumps to the next platform on another column. Begins making his way towards the other side easily enough. Okay, just need to do that. Just like that. Just like that. Mm. Guidance. Mm. Nova. No. <laughs> Ayla, Ayla's like, I should probably go last in case any of you idiots fall in. Let's be careful of this man as well. Uh, well, yes. Rat Rama. Hmm. Do you think he knows more? Is he a Brookstone? He might be, but... I'm struggling to trust anyone new nowadays. Yeah. But um, we need to be careful. Nova can't meet Lucius's eye when he says that about not tr being able to tr struggling to trust people. She's just like, <laughs> is this a uh, messenger ring, by the way? No, it's just <laughs> he's far away. Didn't do this. Didn't do the tea. Didn't do the tea. He was rolling tea. like crazy, so yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think what, we should trust that what, man. <laughs> what, what I could be rolling for something completely different. You True. Don't know. Mm. Um, yeah. So who's going across first? It's very simple. It's um, acrobatics. 
I gave I gave a uh, guy. More athletics over. if you want to try and jump more, do more jumping than balancing. You've got two approaches. You can either try and like balance your way across, like uh, trying to like take these uneasy paths and just keep your balance, or you could be like, fuck it, I'm just gonna jump. And just try and, you know, jump from point to point basically. Mm. Climb up the sides of things. I, I could dimension door it, but that's wasting another spell. Yeah, guidance is a cantrip. Okay. I guess I'll go first. Okay. Yeah. What are you going to do, Sentry? Um, guidance. Thank you. So you get extra D4. <laughs> extra D4. Somebody's been reading YouTube comments <laughs> about how good guidance is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, just, I keep forgetting it's a cantrip. Yeah. You can just cantrip. bam, can, bam, bam, yeah. bam, and just nice. keep using I'm going to just do acid splash now again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what's Sentry doing? I'm just, just going to give it a go walking across. <laughs> so balancing. Yeah. Acrobatics, and you get an extra D4. That's T Y. So that's eighteen. Yeah. 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 No problem. You easily can make your way across. No problem whatsoever. Like just balancing across. It's wide enough that as long as you just keep focused, make your way across, you get to about the midpoint. Um, and I think that's when Sentry looks up and you see the guardian with the angel, the golden wings of light. And they're not like angels' wings. They're like geometric shapes. Cool. They're just like triangles of light, basically. Yeah. But they're yeah. hovering in the air. And they've just got their hand, and they're just gesturing like. Come. So they're like floating, yeah. like like mercy. From just just floating up in the air. Yeah. And it's very slender, feminine guardian form. Um, a single like glowing golden light for an eye, um, almost like a halo shape around its head as well, kind of like in a crescent. Um, so cool. And it's just mm. this. Come this way. Cool. I'll just turn and gesture to the guys this way. Yeah. It's the right way. Sentry makes her way across. Don't want to comment on your visions, but. <laughs> True. Um, Can't see him, bro. Nova, guidance. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Balancing or jumping? <laughs> uh, it. She has her own dice. I have my, I have my yeah, own no, dice. Yeah, no, but that's my guidance dice. No, yeah. but that's also your shit dice. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Frog. It's my guidance dice. Okay. It's all he's got. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do an acrobatics. Which so, is, balancing. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh! Oh, she's dead! <laughs> <laughs> She's dead now. I rolled a three, and the shit dice rolled a one, and then there's another three, so that's seven. Seven, okay. So Nova begins making her way across, um, and you slip. You, you, you slip and begin to fall, so. I will jump uh, to aid her. Not jump in, but like how, scrabble. How big is sure, the Make fall? a strength check. How long, how bad it's is about it? about 60 feet. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Five. Five. So Lucius runs forward, uh, you reach down, to, and you have to run, you know, Nova is about halfway over down this column when she slips. So you have to go out into the column as well, and you reach down to grab her, and as you do, you hear like the column like shift a bit. You reach down to grab her, you grab Nova's hand, but the weight pulls you off balance, and you begin to fall as well. Oh. So I'm gonna give you both two options. You can either, this is, you, this is paying the price, mm -hmm. right? Long you can live either the king. long live the king. No. <laughs> the choice is: do you want to lose? Just, just do you want to take an injury by falling, or do you want to like? Have you got equipment you can sacrifice? Is there something you could use to try and prevent you falling? I've, Technically, you've got your Featherfall tokens. I've they would got activate Featherfall, but I've also got d d Dimension Door, so I could spell us out of here. One willing creature. I don't think I'd react. But you don't have a token, do you? Or I do. do you? you do have. a token. I never used it. All right. Well, if that case, those. Tokens activate automatically after 20 foot of falling. Okay. So I think that that's just the simplest one, right? So the, the tokens both activate, they're consumed. So you fall off. Uh, Ayla will, is going to reach you, but you've already tried to grab Nova, so I'm not going to roll for again for that. Nova is like, Ayla's already running across the thing to try and grab you, but as you are falling, the tokens activate and you just drift to the bottom of this ravine. Well, this is awkward. This didn't go so well, did no, it? No, it didn't. Mm. It really didn't. As you just gently reach the bottom, the tokens just evaporate in your hands. Um, and you can see that you can make your way to the other side and maybe try and climb up because there are buildings and stuff there. But you are in a bottom of a ravine. <laughs> it is very dark. Mm. And you immediately get the sense there is something else down here. Oh, oh no. good. We need to leave immediately. Yes, I agree. Um, can you feel that? Are you okay? Shh. Who's saying that? Ayla. <laughs> All right, I'm messaging. Please be quiet. I think there's something down here. You do hear something when she shouts, like something stirs down here. We're going to try and scrabble up the side, but just be, be on alert. Okay. All right. You see Ayla, like, looks at Quill, like, what do I do? Um, have you got any rope? Rope? 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think I've got I'm going to start climbing. So you begin making... She, she's like, so Ayla and the messenger ring is like, they're moving to the other side. Like, they're going to... I can move over there, but then you've got to make your way across. That's fine. You're, okay. You so go. she just makes her way to the other end, which I've already pre-rolled. Um, Ayla gets to the other end of the thing and then begins lowering a 50 foot of rope down to the bottom of the ravine. So. The two of you, are you trying to move over there quietly? Mm. Stealth checks from Nova and Lucius. Quill, what are you doing? Guidance myself and then just going across. Balance. Yeah. So it's like acrobatics. Yeah, acrobatics. Boom, 15 plus 2, 17. No problem. Perfect. Nice. Perfect. Thank Nine. you, Guidance. Nine. 19. For stealth. 19. Hmm. Moving your way through the darkness. You're having, neither of you have dark vision, I don't believe. So you are, yeah. you're an elf actually. I think you have low light vision. So Lucius, you are kind of leading Nova. And you've kind of, you know, do you take a hand or is she just holding on to you? Or she's like, struggling, yes. Okay, so you've got, definitely like, probably like, you're holding yeah. her by the hand and you're like making your way through. And the dim light is just enough that you can see everything through. The gentle light of the cradle kind of filtering through the ravine, you can see. Um, you can hear something and it's hard to tell because the, all this, these broken buildings that have fallen in and filled the ravine echo sound. And you're very quietly trying to make your steps and you hear something moving in the shadows. But you eventually manage to reach the other end of the ravine and you can see Ayla at the top holding this rope like... You know, if we get out of this, I'm going to write a book. Do you want some help? I can ghostwrite it with you. Yes. Yes. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the time that I'm gonna make you, I just say you can climb up with Ayla helping you. I'm not going to make you roll. In the time that they're doing that, can I ritual cast uh, detect magic? <clears throat> sure. Yeah. So I guess that's like ten minutes. But what's the range of detect magic? Uh, uh, about four miles. Don't think it is actually. I think that's quite untrue. I think you're a liar. <laughs> Thirty feet. Thirty feet. And you can see anything around you, but looking down into the darkness, it's not enough range to determine if there's magical magic. Just, just looking around. Just looking around, yeah. Well, you see magic around you. Yeah. You nothing, see nothing everyone's magic usual. items. Yeah. Okay. That's about it. Cool. Um, yeah, it takes about 10 minutes for them to climb up. Um, whatever was down there luckily didn't detect you, even with a nine on your stealth. Or can't wow. climb. Or can't climb. Well, it would have attacked you before you started climbing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you manage to make your way to the thing and you are pulled up. And it does take longer. Like, it takes you a bit of extra time. Um, and night has truly fallen now upon the city. You pull up. Rammer is like, okay, let's keep moving. We mm -hmm. need to try and find somewhere safe for us to... We're going to either have to try and stay awake through the night or if you want to rest, we need to find somewhere quiet to, to take a break. Do you wonder how we survive that for? No. I'm mm -hmm. assuming that you are skilled enough that you survived. Right. You're here. Oh, less skilled. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're here. I don't need to know. <laughs> yeah. What's done is done. Your, yeah. friend, your friends didn't panic, so I assumed that everything was all right. Yes, you're right. Uh, okay. Um, well, where's good? Where's a safe place to hide? Right, this, uh, we, are, we are in the wilds now, my friend. This is as far deep in as I've ever come. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And you guys, what, you just want to carry on, like... You want to just stumble through? Do you want to? What do you want to do? Uh, What's the plan? I guess could we continue walking, but if we do spawn somewhere, a place that could be okay. Shelter. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Then again, yeah, on the lookout for one. Yeah. 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 Then again, dark vision. How dark is it? I guess outside of the moon. I can take the lead. Yeah. It's on dark. Looking. Like if you don't have a light source. It's now getting to the point where it's pitch black. I, don't I mean, there is gentle light from the cradle, but there's no moon on the row, so it's not like you have like bright moonlight. You have very gentle, soft, dim light. Okay. But it's you can see maybe like five feet in front of you if you don't have dark vision or a natural light source. I, I don't, heard I don't one want time. to generate a light source right now. It would definitely yeah. be very visible. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'll, I'll take the lead. Uh, Rammer, Rammer is also like, I can see in the dark, okay, I can help as well. Let's look for a shelter. Sure. Okay, just uh, just stay close as best you can to all of us, if you can't see. Okay. I can't see a whole lot. And then he nods, he, and Ayla as well as an elf, so the three of you are basically now leading everybody else. It's kind of like... I look three. left, you look ahead and um, right. So cool, you're currently at like disadvantage for like passive perceptions and stuff, so I'm going to half your passive perception and stuff while you're in the dark. Okay. Um, I'm like a geriatric old lady. I think it's like minus 10 or something like that, I think. Minus Eat 10? Child. Okay. I'm blind in one eye, my um, cataract. 
Moving through these crumbling ruined streets, the overgrowth is not as severe now. Now that you've reached more of the center of the city, now it's just war-torn. Um, the buildings are damaged and worn, but not as bad as the outer parts of the city where the forest itself has begun reclaiming civilization. Now you are just on empty cobblestone streets. There are these metal lampposts that have become rusted and worn. Some of them have been broken at the base and toppled over. Buildings have whole walls missing or destroyed. There are a few more sinkholes, but avoidable ones. As the dark night of the cradle, uh, as the dim light of the cradle kind of casts long shadows amongst these ruins, you see in the distance the, the, the glass scar, the actual city made of glass that was transformed long ago. You see a red light begin to move amongst this, these misshapen glass shapes and the light becomes distorted like it's behind bottles on an alchemist's shelf as this light begins moving back and forwards. Oh, really and quickly. Quick enough, like a, like a bird in flight, kind of oh. skittering and flittering between the two. And every so often as it stops, you hear this mournful, uh, just echo, this wail that echoes across the city ruins itself. I don't like it. The I light, is it, is it casting light as well? Like, is it lighting up the streets or the buildings or...? It doesn't. You watch it for a bit of time, almost fixated, mesmerised by this point of light moving back and forwards. Mm. Like a firefly behind bottles. And you watch as it pauses for a moment. And then vanishes. Mm. I don't like that. No, nah, that's, that's freaky. points the angel of death. No. No. It's, um... No. No, Rama. You... <laughs> no, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to find somewhere, there's, there's no obvious places to rest. Like, the ruins all at least have some part of it that are open to the elements. Um, unless you're going to actively search for, like, a hidden basement or something like that, you're not just going to find anywhere that, you know, you're not going to find a comfortable inn or a, a safe looking place to stay. No. You're either going to have to make somewhere defensible and safe or you're going to have to search and actively find one if you want to take a long rest. Um, obviously, you can just push on until, you know, you have more light if you wish. What was the range of the movements of this red light? Was mm. it like coming out to a point where it could come to us? Or? Say... What's Quill's intelligence? Um, yeah, 4,000. Uh, 14. <laughs> 14. Nova's is like 8. Is what, high. sorry? What's Nova's intelligence? I know you two are the smartest. Uh, 15. 15. So plus 2. It's hard to tell. You're trying to kind of calculate how fast it could be moving or like its speed could be anywhere between, you know, if it... It's hard to tell. Like maybe... Enough that maybe like magical flying, sort of like 60 feet. You know, it's not a huge range. It's not like going vroom, across the whole city. Yeah. But it's moving enough that like with con concentrated effort, it's, you know, you almost watch it and it slowly moves and kind of... Mm. No, I was just it's not it super like, fast. If it was like patrolling a particular area or if it was... No, it doesn't. It seems to be erratic. erratic. And it seems to be erratic. How far is it? So watching with the, the light of whatever creature is causing this light, um, because as you, it falls to nightfall, the glass city becomes harder to see because there's no light reflecting it. And so it just creates this like empty... I can't be walking into doors. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but the light is enough where it begins reflecting and kind of becoming blurred and opaque where it's moving behind these buildings. And you reckon that there's only maybe like a couple, you know, two, three more hours and you might be on the edge of the glass scar where the city becomes glass. We could but, keep pressing on. Uh, okay. Um, are, we, are we all comfortable with the whole nighttime thing? I, I don't have half of my abilities unless we take a longer rest and I'm still on half health, but it's just me, so okay. I'll, I'll go with what the group wants to do. I, I know. I know time is of the essence. 
It is. Um, Time and, and also the fact that staying here um, would put us at risk as well. Going over there, and I point towards the red light, that seems pretty dangerous too. Well, we're doing that anyway, right? With half health. Are you half seeing any, um, any prime? Any, any celestial primes? Any of those? Are you seeing those? Are there, is there any, any guidance? Do you know looking for it, or are you just looking in the current area you are? I'm just sort of searching, I guess I can't see it right now, so Not I guess right I'd now. be like, where is it? Like, I can't see it. Like, like. I mean, yeah, do you want to like go, like, do you want to try and like go down a street to see if you can find go it Go try to find it, yeah. Okay, yeah. So Sentry starts moving off, kind of like walking down the streets. Okay, I, well, we're following Sentry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Where's so, she gone? Well, you, I can't see anything. So yeah, like the three elves can see, or the two elves and a half elves see, and yeah, Follow Sentry me. begins just making her way down the street. And yeah, like you turn a corner and you're like desperately looking around and you feel where before you could just see something, now you feel something. That's like a, a string pulling you oh. from the chest. And you turn and you see um, this angelic figure basically at the far end of a street um, and it's beckoning again. It's pulling you closer, but you can feel it now. It's faint, yeah. not like a ghost or a spirit. Hard to describe. Okay. Like a memory or a whisper. It's like feeling a whisper. I think it's just going to keep pulling me forward. Just, I'm just going to keep, keep on trucking. So you just keep following. Keep on trucking it. Yeah. 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 And I think as you begin making your way, I think if we see things from Sentry's perspective, the ruins of the city around you kind of begin to flicker and fade and you kind of have to blink because it, it's almost like it's alive again. You see people walking down the street, people of the Solven nation. This was a city that belonged to Solven and you see the banners with the symbols and you see the lights of the lampposts, the the great, um, the magical lights that ran through the city, people laughing, smiling, going about their business, um, bringing home groceries and you know supplies that they need for their crafts. Um, and that begins to overlap with the ruin and then suddenly you're back in the ruined city and it's quiet and dark and oppressive and then a few more steps it flickers back into the lively kind of bustling city you once knew or at least had heard of. Yeah. Um, and you begin making your way. Sentry begins making your way down and you all follow? Yeah. We're just following, yeah. Um, we're going to messenger ring Sentry. Sentry, where, where are you going? Prime, find... Finding the prime, going forward, prime. I, I can't see it. It's, a, it's right. It's, a, it's ahead of me. It's, it's right there. I think. Uh, we can see. It. Can you just follow me. It'll be fine. Okay. Don't start running, Sentry. Just calm. Let's follow this carefully. I was going to say, are you moving quietly, or are you, are you just like, no, I'm. I'm just. I'm just, I'm just. It's pulling me. I'm just. I'm going. Okay. Like following that so pull. Sentry just starts. Do you run or are you just walking? Just walking, but I'm getting brisker. Like the closer I get, I'm just walking faster, faster. Like Sentry. Uh, so messenger ring. Okay, Sentry. Sentry, I can't keep up. Sentry, be careful. Sentry. I just keep going. It's prime. Prime. Okay. Prime. So Sentry's now running at this point. Like like uh, not like a fast like sprint, but a jog. Like she's like. And you can hear the like clanking of the armor, and it's like the boot, the stone crunching underneath her warforged body. You know, it's going to make noise. If we're all chasing, then I will cast dancing lights to okay. at Run least slide. assist you both. Oh, okay, uh, well, your friend. Uh... We have a problem. Quilt the okay. wand. Uh, is this a wand situation? I don't know. Uh, at this point, by the way, Sentry's about sixty feet, seventy feet ahead of you. Those of you, the, the elves are like, I'm beginning to like, I can't <coughs> see it very well. Sentry just keeps running. Just keep running. Nice, yeah. Keep no, and, and you, the the figure is closer now, but is is you can see she's flying backwards, yeah. and then she turns and begins going down a side street, and you begin to see that 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 glass scar, these buildings made of glass, the first of them aren't very far away. They're just a couple of streets away, um, and you can see their surface <laughs> is scratched from wind and sand that have blown it and, and kind of scratched it and marred it. It's no longer this pristine glass, but like opaque crystal, like a kind of frosted crystal. I mean, you can see the very first bits of those and it's like, like it's almost got both hands out um, and you feel like a sense of relief of, yeah. of you need to help this thing. You, you, it needs your help and it's calling you. Yeah. Um, right, what are the rest of you doing? Sentry turns a corner and you lose sight of her. 
Yeah. I'm going to go into full blown sprint. Okay. Yeah, so just everyone all... just starts running. So you sing that, yeah. all right? mm. You begin running, and uh, as you storm through these city streets, and you're casting dancing lights. So I'm leaving a see. trail of dancing lights behind me. Okay. So. Okay. As in like three of those. Okay. Light us up. The Just lights light us up. kind of cast out, and in the pure blackness of this city where there are no torches, there's nothing really, the light spreads far and wide. And from a distance, it's. Can I make them red? You can make them red, yeah. Interesting choice. <laughs> Blending in? You hear scrabbling of stone as metal fingers and claws. You hear, you even see in the distance down side streets, heads of feral guardians turn and snap up and and they begin scuttling along the ground, crawling along the walls. Packs of them are now descending on your location as Sentry barrels forward. You do your best to keep up, but Sentry is now sprinting as well. So I don't think the only person who can catch up to her is Ayla who is faster than the rest and of And we them. can all keep up, but she can catch up. She can actually catch up to Sentry. Do you want to give her the wand, or are you just like, just look after her? I mean, I know what the wand does, and this isn't a wand situation, okay, like sure. what's happening. Cool. Uh, so, all of you begin running. Um, you hear the sounds of dozens of creatures in pursuit now. Um, you even see some of these glassy spectres. They kind of look at you as you run past. <laughs> We're like pulling the whole dungeon. <laughs> These hands kind of stretch out and they begin, they begin floating <laughs> in your direction. Sentry, the, the, the spirit, the, this guardian that you can sense, the prime as you think it is, it leads you and then stops at the very edge of where the city becomes glass. It stops just inside where these buildings turn to this you know, frosted glass-like texture. And you can see it stops in what must be a clearing. Glass shards have been brushed and pushed away where a big open area has been formed. And you can see a camp has been built here. Oh. There are, they're little metal buildings, like almost like they've been brought in flat, you know, flat, and then built together like oh, flat cool. packs, like yeah. metal, little metal sheds almost. There are workbenches, there are weapons racks, and there's the mark of Callus on all of it. And you see there is an open cellar of what must have been underneath one of these glass buildings. Yeah. And the glass has been smashed and broken away to get access to this door, and it leads down. And the Guardian oh. is stood there, and it brings its hands to our chest oh, okay. and it, it, it almost like begging and it looks down. You want me to go down there? All of us or just, just me? It just, Everyone. It just does this. Um, almost, yeah, like you've heard its words, but now it, it's silent. It can't speak. Um, do you, I don't know. Um, can you nod? Okay, um, I, I, where is everybody? I guess. Like within a few seconds, like six seconds, you hear like the footsteps of everybody rushing up behind you. And as they hit the glass scar, you realize that you're all stomping on like shards of glass. Um, if it weren't for your boots and footwear, luckily it's all worn down. It's not particularly sharp, but crunch, crunch, crunch. Uh, and then oh. you hear the sounds of creatures in pursuit. Oh, oh no. Oh no! Uh, sentry, what's what sentry? What's going on over there? I, hi, um, just, the guardian needs the, the prime needs our help. With what? Where are we going? The, uh, there's a. And as you get there, as sentry saying this, those of you who arrive, you see the camp. This is maybe a couple of months old. Um, there are no bodies or people, but you see yet yeah, that this is um, remnant or Calistarvain. Empire stuff. You Old see or new? A couple of months, two, three years. It's like metal, metal Pop things that have been put <sighs> together. Uh, weapon racks, um, oh. yeah, and uh, mining equipment. It looks like as well, like digging equipment. No, no, this is not good. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. I just, it just, it just pulled me. We I don't need know to if find I can a control place to go. it. We in. can go down. We go in and we close the door. Perfect. Everyone in. Okay. Uh, so you all make your way in, um, you turn around and there's this huge kind of metal 
sturdy stellar doors. It looks like the lock has been melted off. Um, so how do you want to try and lock these doors or keep them closed? Um, I could melt them again with acid splash. It looks like the actual lock has been melted, oh, but, turned right. to goo. Uh, Ayla's yeah. like, I can try and hold them. For how, how long, long are they long? going? Uh, maybe they'll get bored. Hold them for now until okay. we... Okay. And she just grips onto it. Maybe like she kind of like uses the rope and like fastens it to her I'm wrist. I'm going to cast mending on the lock. There you go. So you can basically, you can mend the crossbar. So the lock itself is gone, but you can actually get like, you hold like another piece of metal and like welding. You kind of weld the crossbar in and it locks the door in place basically. You don't know if it will hold forever, but you do hear the creatures. They, you don't think that they know exactly where you are, but they're in this camp and they're searching it. You can hear like wood being ripped apart, those metal sheds being torn to shreds, glass being broken. You even catch through like a tiny slit of this metal door. You catch one of these feral guardians just like walking past it like. <laughs> How good does the door look in terms of? They haven't started attacking it yet. I just mean in terms of like, is it melded together well enough? Hard to say. It's a nice big metal crossbar that Lucius has basically magically welded together. Um, I'm going to messenger ring. This is really bad. But we're in the right place, right, Central? I, th I think so. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we got to where we needed to get to. Um, that's the win here. The lose is up there. Um, it's down there too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, did you see the star beam? I, I did, I did, yeah. I just got it. Okay. Um, Those footsteps you saw earlier? Could have been theirs. They're here already, trying to get at something. It could well be your prime. Guardian technology. Yeah. I don't know. You all seem to have a greater idea of what's going on than I do. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's why we're here. It's related. Um, right. You saw the camp, did you not? I did. I'm not particularly familiar with the symbols on it. It's well. the remnant. Ah. Uh, I've heard of them. That's people that a cult of the old tyrant, Callus, yes? Mm -hmm. It seems like they're excavating. Why would they be here? Maybe trying to find, like you, treasure. Uh, Technology. Technology. All they're right. not to be uh, all right. meddled with. Well, clearly, um, I'm afraid that I don't have much experience dealing with that sort of thing. Well, unfortunately for you, uh, they're up there and our only way is down. Um, all right. Yeah. Do you want to take a look first whilst me and your strong friend here just keep in position? Uh, it's like, I think maybe I should stick around just in case they come through. Okay. As long as the door holds. That's what I mean. Like. I'll keep an eye on it, because if it doesn't hold, then I'll hold it. Sure. Okay. Just come get me. Will do. Just let us know if something happens. Okay. All right, you stay with me, and she looks at Rammer, and he's like, all right, fine, no problem with me. I'll stick with this super strong, crazy woman. Mm-hmm. She's both of those things. Um, okay, I guess. You see a long stairway. Is it lit? Uh, it is not lit, so it's now pitch black. The only the light of like Sentry's faintly glowing matrix, which is barely enough for like a foot around her. So you just have this dull purple light around you. Um, if you have light sources, you can obviously light them. Um, but there is what you realize initially is um, this is not. There's worked stone in this corridor leading down. So whatever the the weapon that hit hit the surface, but didn't yeah, penetrate down. Um, but the stairs are made of metal. The stairs mm -hmm. are actually like some sort of metal. Is there a lot of echoes from us talking? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's been echoing down this into this whatever room is below. All right. This is all messenger ring from now. Yeah. Um, Can I messenger ring before we leave mm -hmm. um, to Ayla? And, well, group, but specifically yeah. Ayla, and just be like, just, um, I, I know, I, I might be wrong, but keep an eye on Ra Rama. I'll punch him. Yeah. I'll smash his face in. He brookstones me. He's dead. I'll kill him. Okay, yes. okay. Yeah, good okay. I'll turn his head into a melon, like a tiny grape. You mean post smash melon? Yeah. Or, okay. What kind of melon is that? I'd pre smash melon. No. Okay. Not with me. Okay. <laughs> Melons don't last long. Yeah. <laughs> she just sees a melon. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's you, that is. Free smash melon. Uh, yeah, she's just like, look, don't worry about me. Just go figure out what's going on with Sentry. Like, no offense, Sentry, but that was crazy. You shouldn't have done that. I'm really sorry. It's fine. Just go figure it out. Okay. We'll do. Okay. Um, could I ritual and detect magic again? Yeah, you take Ooh. 10 minutes. Yeah. Ooh. Cool. While we're doing that, I'll give 20 um, lay on hands points to Nova. Oh. 20 HP to Nova. 20 HP. Thank you. It's all right. But that's but you out of That's me out, but that's the least yeah. I can do. Yeah. Okay. It helps. Danger. It helps. All right. Uh, I will Danger. take the lead. Okay. With my. So you wait. So everybody waits ten minutes. Because we've lost the other two that can see in the dark. Yeah, so you're the only uh, one who can I, see in the dark. I have a hooded lantern. Okay. Do so you want to light that? Um. It, uh, messenger ring. <laughs> Does everyone think it's safe for me to light a lantern? Uh, I mean, these stairs are spirally and curvy and. Well, it's just straight. It's just straight down. These stairs are straight. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I think any light. Sorry, will that go was. All a, the way down. I should have yes ended that, but no. It's they are literally. They're not super deep. Yeah. You could follow them in darkness, and as long as you're kind of touching the walls, you should be okay. I mean, it changes whether or not we use lights. I think no. I think we'll follow Lucius. I've got the detect magic, so if I see anything. Yeah, magical. I think the detect magic is actually helping because, like, Lucius, like his arm is entirely magic. So it's kind of giving you a frame of reference of like, right, there's Lucius's body. I can see the outline of his magic items, which means I know roughly where the floor is and I can kind of make my way from there. Okay. Um, I guess, can you detect magic as well? And your vision will slowly improve as well, like with a bit of dim light. Yeah, and Sentry, let us know if you see anything first okay. before you run for you anything. I will, I'm let sorry. Let us know first. No, it's okay. What did you see? I saw, I saw the Golden Guardian, she was guiding me, and then as I was running, like, everything became like it was, everything was changing, it was like, I was like, I was there, and I was seeing it, there were people, the buildings, everything it was like it was. A memory of what it was. Yeah. Were you here before? Have you been here before? No, but... I've heard a lot of stories about this place. A lot of merchants used to come here back okay. when Solvin was Solvin. So it's not your memories you're seeing. This way. <laughs> Don't stand on my phalanges. Are you now? Are you trying to move stealthily, or because you've made quite a lot of noise at the top of the stairs? But do you want to try and be stealthily going down? Sure. Following Lucius. Everyone is make a as check. fast as Lucius goes, really. Everyone make a stealth check. Disadvantage for Sentry. Yep. One, seven, seven, two, seven for me. Seven for me. That's cool. Five for me. <laughs> more, than half the, more than half the group failed. That's nice quiet. We all just, fall down the stairs. You make your best effort to be quiet, but it's hard. Sentry's footsteps against metal. Um, Quill and Nova can't see, so they occasionally they trip and stumble. It's very difficult. You're all doing your life. best. I also don't have I'm footwear. So My Talons are clanking against the metal. I'm, I'm like leaning on bottom, someone for. It's maybe guiding. about 40 feet down along these stairs, and then it levels out into a short corridor. The corridor is perfectly cut stone, like dead square. Probably made by magic. It's not been mined out, it's been cut by magic. And it leads into a large open chamber. The chamber probably once would have had other parts to connect into it, but they've long since caved in. But there is still this one chamber remaining, and there is a soft golden light that spills out and gives you a little bit of light to see by. Hmm. As you step in, Lucius, you're the first one to see this. A number of things immediately come to attention. The first is in the center of the room, there is a crystal prism, a large crystal prism shape. It is suspended, it is attached to the top and bottom of the room by metal rods. And inside the prism, there is a echo, a guardian's echo. It has a golden eye, a halo of golden light, and it is made of silver and gold, and it's engraved with almost like wings uh, along its body. And it's inside this crystal prism. The other two things you notice is this room would have probably once been, it looks like almost like some sort of laboratory or maybe like a tech, like at your father's laboratory, like workshop. But now it is littered with bodies. Remnant scouts, remnant researchers, people wearing the livery of Calistarbe, slaughtered, torn apart, everywhere. And kneeling next to the prism, you see a man. 
He is maybe six foot, wearing black plate mail. Um, it is of a design not too dissimilar to what you've seen Callus and his forces wear. Uh, he is not Callus. He has a full helm um, kind of on his head, a great sword, and he's kind of leaning on the great sword, um, looking in your direction, waiting for you. Cool. Um, um, uh... And you can see <laughs> emblazoned on his chest is Callus's symbol of the cross swords over the star. It's literally like emblazoned on his, on his chest plate. Cool. And he, and he, but he has a hand up like this. He's kind of got, he's resting on his sword, he's crouched down, and he's holding his hands up. Stay there. Stay there right now. Stop, I've stopped. Hello. Hello. You should tell your friends to be much more quieter. Oh, was that, in. what do you mean friends? I heard you and your companions. The sound echoed from the entranceway. I just make a noise. Oh, I just wanted to walk it out. Over. <laughs> Stands up, kind of stretching. And you can see the sword itself is beautifully engraved. This huge great sword, um, made from some sort of uh, dark, dark grey metal, but there's like green etchings into it along the edges of the the blade. Um, he stands up. One hand, he. Pulls off like a like a pressurized helmet. You see a man with dark grey skin. Um, he has like orange ridges along his forehead and long orange hair, like a kind of almost like Ganondorf esque, that kind of like Ooh. floats down. Yeah, trust and this guy. It, it spills out of his like out of the helmet as he takes it off. It's like falls down his shoulders. I will state clearly now. I do not wish you any harm. Unless you bring harm to me. Why would I bring you harm? He looks at you. It's like, <laughs> somebody killed my companions here. And whilst I am led to believe it is the Guardians, it could have been you. But also, as he looks at you more closely, brings his wrist, flicks it, and you see some sort of like image scale. Lucius, High Elf, you are known to the Emperor. <laughs> He's got files on us! <laughs> What's my hair colour on that device of yours? Hmm, I must admit it is rather different, but there's no mistaking your eye colour. Very rare amongst your kind, I'm led to believe. I assume that Nova Vija, Quill, <laughs> Ayla and Sentry are with you. Father, You're well informed. The Emperor makes sure that his agents have the information they need of mm. potential allies or enemies. I can honestly say we did not harm your companions, your <laughs> colleagues. I suspect as much. But you are known uh, by the Emperor and, well, my immediate worry is that you would be, you would see me just as an enemy to attack. Whatever is dangers have brought here, I can only hope that they will pass. I'm afraid that there are no other exits from this room. I've already searched. I'm not the best person to speak to, so if you wouldn't mind, I'd like the collective thoughts of my companions <laughs> in this scenario. Okay. He stands up, it's like, of course, bring them forth. I'll step Let's just have then. formal introductions, as I know your names, but you do not know mine. That would be wonderful. Please, come down. Okay. There's a lovely man here to meet us. Mm. He knows exactly who we are, don't worry. I heard. I mean, you can all hear it, yeah. We, we, we heard. Um, well, you know who we are. So do you all step down and emerge? Yeah. Century, I guess with my... Century, what you, what's get, look at this face. <laughs> look at this face. I, I mean, know. you, you, this is, you, I mean, this is one of his, this is an elite trooper. This is, in fact, actually, make a history check for me, because I just want to see if you know exactly what he is, or if you just think he's a soldier. So 15. 15. You remember in your training for the war, that Callus has essentially his own order of paladins called the Knights of Gideon. Mm. This is one of them. Right. His armor, his race, um, they're, they're bred, they're genetically engineered 
um, to be to look the way they are. It gives it basically gives them that natural affinity for magic and things like that. Um, right. They tend to have a lot of firepower, like fire magic. Cool. Um, All right. And probably yeah. more useful than Knights of Ren too. You notice him. Close to the nose, mate. He looks, and you can see he's holding this. He holds this greatsword in his other hand, and he flicks this this device on his wrist. And yeah, he looks around, nods. I assume that Ayla is upstairs. Keeping us safe, yes. Good. Um, the feral guardians. From what I understand, she is a powerful warrior, therefore I am pleased that she is defending this place. So you know who we are? Yes. My name is Maximilian Taldros, Knight of Gideon. No, fucking isn't. <laughs> 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 Maximilian, Maximilian Taldros, Knight of Gideon. Oh. I serve in the great. <laughs> serve in the great Emperor Valkyrian's army. You know him as Kalistarbane. Valkyrian? That is the Emperor's formal name, yes. I'm not surprised that you only know his warmongering title. Likely told to you by your. Your false gods. No, he's quite clear of calling us that himself. Oh, perhaps he is, enjoys the effect that the name has. I know him under many different names. But you mentioned uh, potential allies. Why would he use this warmongering term on us? Because he seeks to... Fear is a powerful tool, Lucius. Some worlds, when they rebel, must be reminded that there are punishments for going against the needs of the galaxy. Right. Well, um, I want to make it clear. Please, speak freely. We are not here for you. Good. We are here for an entirely different purpose. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And we wish to fulfill that purpose without any bloodshed. Ah, this pleases me. I also, I was... Literally about to say the same, but there is a complication. Is this to do with your device? My device? The ones listing all our names? No. Is that the complication? No, not at all. Okay. Hmm. And he like looks at it again, and his eyes flicker on Nova. It's like, no, not at all. Instead it is to do with Kill. the... <laughs> it is to do with the creature that haunts the city. Okay, is that the red light flying around? Yes. Okay. A powerful guardian. It has been corrupted by the Craven Star. You know it as Hadar. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> this, oh. this takes utmost precedence over any other matters. It must be destroyed. Is it too powerful? It is powerful, but my intent was to go and slay it. But now that you are here, perhaps there is an opportunity for us to form a temporary alliance. I look at Sentry. <laughs> and he stands there and he has this poise, right? Like, mm. he's very regal, straight-backed, um, imposing, but no hostility. Like, he has the sword loose, ready to use it, but there's no tension in his muscles. He is just very calmly standing there, waiting for your response. Um, I ask him about the echo behind what'd him. What do you say? What's the Knight of Gideon doing with that very precious looking echo behind you? Mm. I understand the circumstances of you finding me here are likely to imply some sort of nefarious scheme. I was sent here to investigate a missing research team that was stationed here months ago. He gestures to the bodies all around him. They had discovered this echo, you call it? Yes. Here, when they arrived. They have been studying it. They believe it is connected to the Guardian that has been corrupted by Hadar. That's not the right one. I can only tell you from my understanding of their research that they identified it as having the same magical signal as the creature that is now haunting the city. My associate, you may as well reveal yourself now, Danva, Dana. And you see that behind you, My like mother. right by the stairs, a creature that was invisible because there were two sets of boots! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you see a, 
Um, quite short. She's probably about four feet three. She's a dwarven woman, but not like a dwarf you've ever seen. Her skin is dark gray, very much like Maximilian's. Um, she has bright red, almost ember, like hot forge fire colored hair uh, in several long braids um, down the back of her neck. Um, she has like markings, like tattoo tribal markings around her face in a, like a almost pitch black, um, but dark gray ashen face. Looks like a dwarf otherwise completely. Um, in other oh, systems, like a, it might be a, a Durgar. Durgar, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, and she appears, and you can see that her hands are like in prime spell casting mode, and she was basically <laughs> aiming at your back. <laughs> we are so stupid. My oh, colleague. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, knew about that one. Of course. Uh, of course. Didn't see that with my detect magic. Uh, I forgot your detect magic oh. was active. Okay. My apologies. Uh, you would have seen. You would have seen an illusion effect. Uh, so if fine. you want to be like, I knew she was there. No, no, it's cool. It, it's fine. Cool she didn't kill us, so like, whatever. Yeah, I completely, <laughs> forgot, I completely forgot about your detect magic. That's if you did point. die, you would have been like, I knew that uh, was there. Can we roll <laughs> back? Um, <laughs> um, no, she smiles, and it's just like, hey, welcome. Okay. As long as there's no trouble, there'll be no trouble with me. We don't have to cause trouble. Um, My associate here is something of an expert in magical affairs, and she has the ability to read magical um, auras. But we've been unable to access the guard, the, this creature, this echo itself. I've been unable to glean any more information from it. I'd ho- hoped that it would prove some use against the corrupted... Hadar agent. But this echo itself isn't corrupted in any way. It doesn't look like it is. It does not appear to be. The researchers, and that is what the research team here were discovering, I believe they may have been found by the feral guardians and slaughtered. I'm going to messenger ring real fast, if I can. Sentry, you remember when we first came across that feral forge guardian? Yeah, in Dwarven. It had that echo that I touched and gleamed its memories. Yes. Do you think we could do that again? We could give it a try. I think it belongs to the, the Golden Guardian. I think it's hers. You see Maximilian like looking at you all just go very silent. He's looking around curiously. Do I see him look around at them? Like, yeah, like both yeah. of them are watching you very yeah. oddly because you've just all suddenly gone very quiet. Can I just like, because I, if I catch that look, mm-hmm. and, and obviously because I can hear this conversation, can I just give him like a little wave? Like, like try and make it like, sl- but obvious, but sly, mm. but obvious sly. Yeah? yeah, obvious sly. So what, so make a slight of handshake? Just like trying, just trying to like distract him. Right, like, okay, yeah. oh, okay. Not like, if these guys see it, right, they see okay. it. But okay. like, it's more that I notice that he's okay. clocking on that. Oh, so you're just yeah. trying to pad yeah. the time a yeah, little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I think, you know, in some ways, if I was an external character to that and I saw Nova, known associate of Callus Starbane, waving at an agent of Callus Starbane, you can take what you want of that. Nova, known associate of Callus Starbane. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's what he thinks I am, isn't it? (laughs) Well, that's what, that's what I thought you thought of Nova as well. Yeah. You um, literally shouted at me two yeah. episodes about it. <laughs> you, you wave at him and he kind of like raises an eyebrow. Continues. Carry on. Um, is this... Do you ha- no. Okay. Do you have any um, information from this research team that could help us? Sadly not. They were here investigating Guardian technology. They found a few things, but mainly mm, things that didn't seem to make much sense. They spoke of something called a prime, but it is not here. We know that much. And instead, they found this. They were its containment unit and its magical signal are quite unique. They were studying that, but most of their data has been destroyed. It was on personal uh, storage devices, which have been destroyed by the creatures here. I gleaned what I could, but that is all. Callus never struck me as someone to hire bounty hunters. Bounty hunters? Well, you come here to slay the feral guardian. What beyond that? No. Why slay No, him? no, no, my dear uh, Quill, is it? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I have a bounty hunter, please. I'm a knight of Gideon. I am one of elite knights dispatched to protect our empire, to protect our people, to find tools to assist Callus in his... Mission to destroy his glorious mission to destroy Hadar. Instead, I was sent here to find out why this research team had gone silent. Myself and Dana were dispatched to investigate, as we are skilled agents. 
And upon arriving, I learnt of the corrupted creature's presence. And now that takes precedent above all else. It must be destroyed. A creature of Hadar cannot be allowed to exist on any planet. It will only spread its corrupting influence further. Here, here. Well, we're not in disagreement with that, I don't think. No. Good. Excellent. May I, Sentry? Yeah, of course. Do you not have a connection as well? Would you rather do it? Well, we tried it. It didn't work, but we tried it with the other Guardian, but we can always give it a go, I suppose. If this is a echo that's connected to Sentry, Guardian in some way, then maybe Sentry should try it. Let's make sure Sentry's okay then while she does it. Okay, okay I've got my wand out. <laughs> the uh, Guardian reset wand. Dana's like, if you're thinking of trying to read that thing, you're going to have to get past its containment unit first. I've not been able to get past it at all. Oh, I thought that was part of... Uh... The prism is like, it's like a... And, and you can see the echo is moving around. It looks trapped. It looks like it's imprisoned in there. Uh, it's got to be something. The... Technology, the prism. Mm. What, what kind of technology does it look like? Does it look guardian or does it look? Looks. Um, uh, Century would recognise it. It looks solvent. It looks. Solvent. It looks guardian technology. It's the kind of thing that would have been in the old laboratories where guardians were built. The prism. So it is na- like it's the native prism itself, to yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. This it's, city. It looks like it's part of Kamina City. Kamina City was a research station for solvent. Does it look okay. like the same sort of shield? Field that was on that shield, the solvent shield we saw. No. Okay. It's not. A, it's it's like a physical crystal. Right. Okay. Uh, it's not like a, a crystal barrier. It's like a physical substance. Okay. Um. So not magical. You don't know. Maybe. So like a keypad or anything. I mean, would you, would you go up to it? I'll and go like, look, look around. Look at it, There's yeah. no. There is no keypad. Um. But you you can feel that echo inside. It's trapped. Yeah. It's scared. Um. It desperately wants to help its guardian. Okay. But it can't. Oh. Is there a chance? This looks non starbin right? This... It looks native to the city. It's certainly not starbin technology. What if Solva knew that something was wrong with this Guardian and thus encased it for the greater good? What if someone here trapped it and then corrupted the, 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 the Prime? What if the Guardian was corrupted and sent the Echo out to stop that from being corrupted? But then why is it trapped here? To stop it from getting to the dark. These are all very nice theories, but unless you've got an idea of how to get it out of there, it's all quite useless. Have you tried smashing it? I have tried burning it, smashing it. Gideon's hit it with his sword. Nothing seems to have worked. It it almost reflects any kind of uh, aggravated energy directed towards it. You tried speaking softly to it? Indeed. I actually have. Some of these strange, some of your backwater planets have strange magic about them, so we've tried all sorts of things, but the researchers couldn't fathom it either. I suspect it might need, she looks at Sentry, I think it might need a guardian's touch. Guardian to rescue its echo. Maybe. When, did anyone else try to touch this? Is it harmful? It didn't harm me when I blasted it with fire and smashed it with a mace. When you touched it yourself? I haven't touched it. That's what I'm worried about. Gideon did. And? It did not affect me in any way. Well, if its technology is solvent, yeah. Sentry's probably the most capable. If anyone can unlock it, Sentry. Okay, I'll reach out and touch it. Okay. As you reach up, Sentry, you feel something. Not sure if it's a spell or a part of your matrix or something. It's like a key. Mm. And as you reach out to the crystal, you know that with willpower, you can will it to open. This okay. is solving technology, but also it, it knows you. This oh. device recognizes you as Sentry Princess Protect, as the protector of the royal princess, and it will allow you to open it. Oh, okay, cool. And if you will it to do so, yeah. it doesn't open, but your hands just meld through it. Whoa. Just, that's cool. That's cool. You reach out, you grip the echo, and pull it, and pulls through. Um, and that's where we're going to take a break. Oh, oh no, not, man. Ooh. Ooh.
Oh, oh that was awesome. awesome. Refuse the brief. Oh. Well, you can enjoy some amazing fourth birthday cake yes. Oh, yes. Yes. that it's Helen amazing. made. Thank you very much, Helen. Yeah, thanks, Helen. Um, so you guys can enjoy what those babe. while I read out these sweet donos. But also, just quickly, bits. Uh, we got bits from I, Dunny, Ken, Gears of Zach, Ooh. as well as gift subs from Hot Coffee Junkie, Safi1519, mm. S. Mitchell86, Cooper Orc, Old One, Near Shred, pronounced near oct, thanks. Uh, not near a shed, uh, Darth Dave 41, <laughs> plus lots of lovely subs, resubs, and bit donos on the 300. Thank you very much, everybody. That was from the High Rollers channel. But then loads of donos as well on Yogscast. Thank you very much. Nightjar, uh, I can't believe you nerds have been playing D&D for four years now. Thank you so much for making the past four years so much more bearable and delightful. Not sure what I would have done without you. All the community included in my life love you all. Thanks, Nightjar. Uh, Ola Renve donated. <laughs> it's, that's normal, come on. Ola Renve donated no message, thank you very much. Metamanu with a quarter hundo, thank you very much. Check out this. Can they actually see it? Oh yeah, they can. Echo Cake and then also, and these were both made by Helen, thank you so much. These are vegan, gluten free. Are they gluten free? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, thank you very much. So, Manu, thank you for the quarter hundo. Dr. K. Brent, P.S. Love your hair, Re. Only just saw it at the start. Can't stay at 3 a.m. in Australia. Uh, in the land of fire. Yeah, I know. That's so crazy bad. Uh, P.P.S. We've been lucky and got a lot of rain for the last four days in some places. Woo! Starting to forget what a blue sky is. Oh, my God. Do you want a slice? Um, yes, of the chocolate cake, chocolate? please. Yeah. There's a coffee one. I'm not a coffee cake man, but thank you. Um... Samwise, 2450, four more years, four more years, four more years. Been a fan since the last decade. Uh, ha ha, nice one, Mark. And now I can finally say I'm able to play some D&D. Some of my friends have finally been converted to D&D. Uh, they want as the DM. Have fun is the main one. Any tips? Yeah, have fun is the main one. Uh, read through the books. Um, loads of advice out there. Check out Matt Colville's stuff. Check out loads of stuff. Kate and Crab with arms. Thank you for the quarter hundo. Come watch live last week as I was playing Star Wars role playing with friends as a force sensitive porg. Wow. The big, biggest challenge is trying to communicate with the rest of the party as our protocol droid translates things slightly wrong and I can only squawk. Wow. Force sensitive porg. That's a character. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Tim Air, thank you very much. Happy fourth anniversary. Much appreciated. Uh, Raging Rhino 101, thank you very much. Happy birthday, High Rollers. I may have only been here for, the eighth, uh, for an eighth of the four years, but still wanted to say thank you for making me love DD. Question, any tips on multi-classing, in particular adding a level of paladin to my level six fighter? I mean, just do it. If you've got, if you can do it and it makes sense for a story, and it, it will be a cool part of your character, then do it. Uh, Arlen, thank you very much. Been a while since I've been able to catch you lot live. Thank you for being amazing, inspiring people that you are, never change. Here's to another brilliant year of high rolling. Thank you very much. Safi1519, quarter hundo. Happy birthday, high rollers. You turned four and I turned 21 today. Happy birthday. Thank you for making this uh, an awesome birthday. It's my first time watching live. I'm working on a special present for you, so I'll email you when it's done. You all rock. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, and thank you for your upcoming gift. Happy birthday. Uh, Angelo5, uh, it's VOD time for me today, but just wanted to throw in a donation for the occasion. Thanks for another year of great storytelling. Also, a question regarding merch. Any chance for a HR-branded dice tray? I have all of your sets, but no tray to go with them. It is something we're talking about. We're just trying to find the right supplier right now, so thank you very much. Goblin Shark, hi boys and girls, please. First time donating, I've been watching since the beginning. It's my birthday as well as the High Rollers, so I thought it'd be the best time to tell you guys I love this stream so much and have seen me through both secondary school and college. Well, happy birthday, Goblin Shark. I'm glad we could be there and hang out uh, and, in, and you enjoy. Dutch Dulio, uh, thank you very much. Hey, been watching for about a year and finally figured out how to donate. None of my pals even know what D&D is and I've never played, but I'm addicted to watching this Aurora story unfold. Once a week is not enough, keep it up. Well, thank you very much. Convince your friends to give it a guide. Just buy the star set. Just get them playing. Um, Demi Hoomst. Uh, hey, guys. First time catching live. Uh, I've been watching this since Mark did the equestrian one shot and haven't looked back since. Currently in the middle of the Lightfall campaign. I'm currently nervous because Grey Bell, love from Australia, and please don't die. There's a lot of similarities going on between two campaigns, actually, uh, between Lightfall and this. Lightningwing Dragon. Hey, y'all. I'm asking anyone who is proficient in animation to make an animation of their sprint through the city using either the Benny Hill theme or running in the 90s. Thank you very much. Um, Bayfeather. Thank you very much. Don't die. Thank you very much, Bayfeather. We're going to try not to. And then Mr. Piff. Happy birthday, High Rollers. Finally figured out how to donate. Thanks for years of entertainment. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Pliff, for a generous donation as well. Thank you. Uh, you guys all good? We're just uh, 
Okay. okay. I just want a chocolate bit, bit, a tiny bit of chocolate cake for me. Hey chat, it's me, your dungeon master. Waiting for them all to come back. I hope you're enjoying this episode. No? I hope you're enjoying this episode. I am. Dropping some sweet lore. It's really cold in here. Getting some, some cool bits, some sentry lore. It's gonna be great. Big ups to Helen for the cake. Big ups to Helen for the cake. For it's that got cake. Little unicorns on it. Yeah. yeah. Fucking amazing. Are you. I'm surprised that you're not like, I love this new armor man. I love him. I absolutely love him. I have some <laughs> ideas of how to interact with him, but I'm. Um, Just do it. Well, I don't want to stuff. Okay. Just wanna... be like, hello there, friend. I too would like to join the Church of Calat Starbane. Yeah. Mm. Starting with Smooch and you. Um, yeah. <laughs> Mm. Maximilian. Yeah. yeah, it's a great name. Mm. It's a great it name. Is. Why? It's I don't know why Tom laughed. It's a great sword. Yeah. I was wondering actually, because like Nova's hexblade warlock, mm. you know how nice that sword would be in Tian Gong form. That would be nice. Nova with a great sword. Yeah, exactly. Really? She'd be mm. there. It wouldn't be uplifting. Do you imagine that? The scary thing. Yeah. The funny thing is, is despite the nonsense of like you not know, having the strength enough to use it. I think the hex weapon thing does allow you to do it. It makes like, you proficient, right? It makes you proficient, but I think that some, I think two-handed weapons do have a limit on like if you you need a certain strength to use them. I think. Okay. That could be wrong. Uh -huh. That might be uh, that might be, be armor I'm thinking of. My strength of seven. Yeah. Mm. Not the strongest. <laughs> mm. That'd be hilarious. Good times. We're so good. I love that. Uh, what's chat doing? Hi, chat. Oh, you even bought me a fork. Good man. Aww. Thank you, mate. This cake is amazing. Yeah. It's so good. Nice. No cake. I poisoned it! Oh. You're all gonna die! <laughs> okay. I guess okay. I'll die. Fam, I've made it this far. Yeah. We've had our rings. Such service. I know. Right. Cake is good. <laughs> Did you get some as well, Sid? Yes. Yeah. Good. I delivered. You delivered some, some to him. Unto Sid. Deliver rude. Mm. So Everyone's saying hello to Kim. Hi. Hi, Hi Kim. Boy. Hello. Ooh. The fanfic is waiting is writing itself. Nova wakes up in Maximilian's arms. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm a name like that. Why like Maximilian? Why, why, why don't you? Why you feel yeah, it so funny? Like I don't Maximilian. find it funny. It's just a hell of a name. Maximilian Talos. I mean, it's That's pretentious and like callous. Mm. Yeah. Gideon <laughs> Prime. Come on. <laughs> Gideon is the name of a planet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who's Gideon though? Exactly. Emperor oh, Valkyrian. Giddy on. Hold your horses. So, mm. I know you were all eating cake. Yeah. Mm. But we come back in as Sentry holds this mm. echo, this angelic celestial style echo in her hands. Mm. And Sentry, you feel the immense relief from this echo. It feels free, but there is a sense of urgency. Mm. It, there is something it needs to do, or it feels it needs to do. Maximilian uh, and Dana look cautiously, um, but don't say anything immediately. What do you all do? Can you... What's it saying? What's it doing? I can just feel it. It feels... It, it needs to do something. It needs to do something now. I don't know what it is. Pass it to me, Gu Pass it to me Guardian, and I can tell you. I can read all of these things. Messenger ring. I wouldn't do that. I, um, I too can do that. Oh, really? Yes. Ah, they did say... Yes. Can I get one of those? Can, can no. I hear, what does it say about... Um, yeah. Can, mm, I'm just like craning, trying to like... <laughs> uh, fellow sorcerer, I see. Your magic's innate. Can we read what... Spoke about... It's more than an eight. Mm. At least a nine. <laughs> oh no. Funny little man. Quite what? a funny fellow. What do you mean? Elf. He's an Never elf. mind. Is the. As for what's on these files, you don't need to know. I, I just want to see what's in that. I'm sure you me. do. But I'm not going to be showing it to you. All right, well, I understand. Uh, Maximilian's the, the nice one. But I understand you're not going to trust us right away, and we are in something of a. A binding predicament, aren't we? Well, we've got Past a guardian that can dictate. read an echo, a sorcerer that can read its aura. By all means. I'm here. 
That's the sole Whatever. reason we're here. <laughs> You're here. <laughs> Maximilian is like, it's fine, Dada. Allow them to do this. This is this does not interfere with our mission. It's not like we work for Hadar. I do dancing lights of red around my night. <laughs> 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 not the time to, not the time. <laughs> so what, Lucius, you want to reach out? Uh, What's yeah. What's yeah. you want to try and do? I'll let, I'll let Lucius reach out and touch Faith. <laughs> mm-hmm. Are you sure? yeah. you, have you tried it yourself first? Well, I think, I think you'd be the best no to try it. for you both to try it. You've done this before where you can both... Yeah, can both, both do of it. you touched it before. You and me? Together. Very well. Touch and faith. If we both die, that's it. <laughs> okay. So you both hold on to the echo and you breathe deep and sentry you allow your matrix to connect to it to try and glean the information from it. With Lucius it is a deeper, it's a mystical connection. You can feel the magic swelling in this creature and the magic in you and a connection is formed, a bond. You both have flashes of memory. Not a specific moment, but multiple moments over years. It's all from the perspective of a, a being. You can't see yourself, but you instinctively know you are a guardian called Herald. Cool. You stand before the first memory, you are in a dark chamber. The heat is oppressive, swelteringly hot, impossibly dark, except before you, you can see a huge being, 20 feet tall, but it is buried beneath rubble, parts of it sealed away by cooled magma. It is a guardian, but not just a guardian, Mm. the guardian. You stand before the prime. An impossible, androgynous figure, tall, royal almost. Its matrix, like a galaxy of colours, swirls in its chest and his eyes stare down to you. Herald, go to the city of glass. Await the successor. This is your mission. This is your purpose. The memory shifts, fades. You walk through the streets of the city of glass for the first time. It's empty, barren. There is no life here. There is a sadness that wells in you. Your only companion is Echo, golden light in darkness. And years go by, no successor comes. You feel yourself beginning to fade as your own life comes to an end you desperately begin putting out a call. Find the Prime, find me. Come to the City of Glass. The successor doesn't come. Your more years go past. You're near the end of your life. So you put out another call. You hope that another guardian will come. Maybe you can task them with your mission. And one comes, a young scout an unimportant guardian in the grand hierarchy, in the grand scheme of destiny, unimportant. But one comes, it finds you, you become your friend. But they can't carry on your mission. They are not herald. That is not their purpose. And you face a terrible choice. You have the power to give life to guardians, to give life to a fallen guardian once more, but that means you also have the power to take life. Your mission is to wait for the successor. You cannot fail. So you consume him, your friend. You crawl up on him when he sleeps, when he rests, and you drain the life from him and watch as he turns feral. But you have new life to wait for the successor, to complete your mission. More guardians come. You form a community, but one by one, as your years drift away, you know you have to keep stealing that life to keep your mission. More and more guardians turn feral. 
the last memory, you stand atop a throne of broken guardians. You rule this domain. All you want is more life, more fuel, more power. There is a part of you that remembers why you were here, that remembers who you were. There is a part of you remembers that you were an agent of good for the people, for the guardians of Varroas. You walk to the edges of the glass scar. You take Echo, who has watched you suffer through all of this, and into Echo you instill every last bit of goodness you still have as you place him into the containment prism and leave him there. And the hunger comes. And that's where the memory ends. Oh, man, I got chills. Oh. Oh. Damn. That's a spicy meatball. <laughs> it's the spiciest meatball, Mark. Holy I, I shit. I did think we had some confusion over the prime, because I was like, I mm. thought the prime was man, like, yeah. or male. Like, yeah, so I don't think this was no. primey boy. I think the only prime we ever saw, or century ever saw, was the angelic wings. Well, the thing telling us. Well, I went, I went back to my notes prime. to the first vision <clears throat> in Dwellenden, and it was like, yeah, male, male voice. And we've oh, only okay. ever heard male voice come out of century when. Oh, yeah. 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 But you have that very clear memory of Harold put out the message to come here to find the Prime. Oh, what it point needed. Mm. This was at the point of like, I just want to eat Guardians. There, well, no, she put out the message when she still wanted to accomplish her mission, oh, and then she... but felt like I'm going to die if I don't find a way to keep myself going. Right. Yeah. It's that horrible thing of so desperate to fulfill her purpose, and the two of you can infer this from the memories very easily, so desperate to fulfill her purpose yeah. that she, she did something unthinkable. But you, and so the, the main thing though is, is you know that in this echo, and, and essentially you know how echoes are, they contain fragments of you. They are echoes of yourself. In this echo is everything that was good about Harold. Yeah. In this thing. and. She must have put it here to protect it, probably from herself and from others as well. Okay. So that's, there's a, there's a glimmer of hope. Mm, okay. My theory was right. Kind of, <laughs> a little bit wrong, but... Maximilian uh, waits very patiently. Danver is kind of watching curiously as you're both examining this. I know where the prime is. Um, and Maximilian just is, uh, waits. Were you successful? Does it contain any information or clues about how to defeat this corrupted guardian? He's, it's, she's not corrupted. She's... I mean, this is very clear, Sentry, that this thing is corrupted by the Craven Star. It consumes its own kind. Only to keep its purpose going. Only to ensure it has enough life to complete its mission. It's still beyond the realms of any sentient being's choice. It is no different to the undead monstrosities that Hadar creates. It, can, it destroys to perpetuate itself. But we can, we can fix it. We don't have to destroy it. Mm. We, just need, we need to find a way of returning this guardian to it, or this, this echo to it. You are idealistic, as Kala said, all of you. I'm sorry, Sentry. I have to agree with Maximilian. Mm. Although I understand I, I was the Herald. Its choice to remain here to fulfill its duty should not have been superseded by consuming its own kind. Mm. Its duty should have ended there rather than destroying more guardians. Is that really the purpose of the Prime? But what is the, what is the Prime? What? It's clearly very, very important. So much so that this Herald gave up its sanity and consumed other guardians for it. It's purpose. If, if we destroy it, we, we'll, never, we'll never know. We'll never know what it is. We will. It, the Echo has everything left. D does the Echo um, say anything about who the successor might be? Any redeeming, any identifying features? Any? No. no. The memories were scattered. It didn't have all of the memories. The I only thing they, it really said. They communicated all the stuff they saw, right? Yeah. Also, they seem to have set out multiple desperate calls to find the Prime. I think almost every Guardian must have received it. But what if it was one that was asleep for a long time? I mean, there's every chance, Sentry. 
but at the same time, it, there's also every chance it may not be. Look how many this Herald consumed because they were all led to the Prime. Do you remember the one Guardian that um, Breeze? Rama mentioned? The one that was looking for the Prime? Yes. But everyone else was looking for the Herald. Maybe that's connected in some way? Maybe the one that was looking for the Prime is the friend, the original friend of the Herald anyway. Interesting. Some sort of uh, magical communication over great distances, entirely within their own kind. Guardians truly are a bit of a magical marvel. Hmm. I, I fear the safety of this Echo if we are to go anywhere near Herald in her current form. I fear that it may destroy what's left of the goodness that's remained instilled in this. Then maybe we just keep it, uh, keep it safe, I suppose. I, I don't know. Lucius wouldn't know this, because Lucius isn't a guardian. You don't know that? <laughs> <laughs> Pulls off his mask. The echo... It's true, what Lucius says. The echo could become corrupted. But the echo by itself can't do anything. It's a whisper, a, a tear in the rain. But there is a possibility that Echoes can transfer back to their Guardians. Same way that when you send Echo out to scout, you can retrieve those memories. You can, if you were to be knocked unconscious, if you were to lose your memory but Echo was to continue, you could take that information back as your own. If you were to, if your personality was to become corrupted, that Echo can be used to almost restore you to who you were. There's a chance that it could work the other way. That this Echo could yeah. If you could render that, if you could render Herald unconscious, you could force it to replace its matrix. That's only something Sentry would know because that's what you are. You know you could do that. You know, your friends, your friends even use parts of Echo to help restore you to life when you were resurrected. Yeah. So. It's symbiotic in symbiotic, a way. Symbiotic, but both ways. It's yeah. a risk, but there's also a hope. Yeah. That's what you need to decide you want to do. Well, whatever you decide, can we have an agreement that we will work together to try and stop this creature? And I suppose you'll be logging all the information you find on us. Dan is like, I've certainly taken a note of everything you've said about Guardians. It is something that we are interested in. It is a technology beyond even the great emperor's finest uh, artifices. But, of course, but just because we learn something from each other does not mean that that means no reason we cannot work together. I'm sure that you will learn something about myself and Knight, uh, Knight Maximilian here. Think of it this way. Right now, we could be enemies. We could fight each other or we can go our separate ways try and fight this thing separately. But together, we stand a better chance. If it helps, and I know that from, from your perspective, you have no reason to trust me. And he stands up straight and he puts the great sword in the ground. I swear upon the three rings of Gideon Prime, as a knight of Gideon and forsworn in the ancient oaths for Emperor Vicarian, I, Maximilian, Taldros. Taldros will take, will not bring you to harm and will defend you as best as I can until this mission is complete. And as long as we do not interfere with each other, I will not harm you in any way until our next meeting. Until our next meeting. <laughs> I cannot promise that my emperor will not command me to try and fight you. What but about for now. D Dana? D does Dana have a cool swear? Dana is not a knight of Gideon. She is uh, a sorceress. And so she is prone to her own whims, but he nods at her. I'm not going to do anything if Maximilian's not going to. I'm not going to try and fight you on my own. I'm not that stupid. If he's sworn his stupid fucking vows, then I'm a bit out of luck, even if I wanted to, which I don't. 
You've got a street, you Erosians. What do you think, that we're all just trying to kill all of you all of the time? No. Well, I'm here after magical knowledge. I don't care. I mean, that's been our experience with everyone from Starbane's forces so far. You have been unfortunate to deal with the remnant, I'm sure. These, the ones who were left behind, the ancestors of our old forces. Shansara tried to kill us. You've met Shansara? <coughs> no. Interesting. She is a propagandist and she is a fanatic, uh, an insane fanatic at that. I'm not surprised. She is a little unstable. Just a bit. Um, well, I mean, at least we have a joined goal. It does make sense, unfortunately for us. Do we, Sentry? They want to destroy this, Harold. At least, well, there's things... Well, I wish to see its corruption brought to an end. If you genuinely believe, and I know your kind, we have many reports of guardians and of you. In fact, I know one who speaks very highly of you. Who's if that? you say you know of the Emperor's secret. Oh, uh, the V, mm. the, the big V. Valor. Okay. We may speak of her. She speaks highly of you. If you genuinely believe that you have a way to stop this creature, remove its corruption, without destroying it, I will give you the opportunity. But it will be a chance. If I fear that that has failed, if I fear that it has influenced you, I will destroy it. I make you this promise now. At least tr let's try it, just once, and then, then we'll do it the hard way <laughs> if it fails. You know your kind the best. If you truly think this is possible, I say we go for it. I'll try and make it work. And I, I believe in Sentry's idea. Thank my you. worry is Hadar. We didn't see anything in the memories of the corruption leading to Hadar. Oh, I have a theory about that. Okay. Hadar is the destruction of life. Yeah. So, if someone does something, like a guardian, that fundamentally is good, like take other people's lives to feed their own, that very act is evil. So it corrupts it, it makes it evil. Remember Breeze? Yeah. He would take life and transfer it. I don't know if he's Hadar touched, maybe he's on his way there, but I think there could be something in that. Why do you keep doing that? You are very smart, Novavija. Your theory is very correct. Hadar's presence is more than just... He, the Craven Star does not need to have direct access to an individual to corrupt it. It is not necessarily just the act of destroying life. Sometimes there are very justified reasons to destroy life. A man seeks to harm you and your family and you kill him in return. That would not invoke Hadar's corruption. It is the essence of consuming for the sake of destruction, for entropy. What I have witnessed of this herald is that perhaps whilst once, from what you say, she is consuming to preserve a mission, that has now become uh, hubris. She consumes because she can, because these guardians constantly come to this place seeking some sort of angel, and instead they find simple destruction, entropy. This is what Hadar, this is what the Craven Star represents, hunger. Uh, the need to destroy, to feed oneself for no other reason than because it wants to. You, you said from your vision, hunger. The hunger took the Herald. Yeah. Every Herald Hadar touch we've met has always spoken of hunger. Mm. It is an ever-expanding star of death. It consumes everything it touches, constantly growing. It has no need to feed in this manner. But it does, because it is, is, it is entropy. It is inevitable death. That's kind of this is why it is the greatest enemy this galaxy, this universe faces. This is why the Emperor's will must be followed. I wonder if the Emperor's will is out of guilt. Guilt? You speak of things you do not know, Lucius of Erois. You have no idea of what my Emperor has done or what he has achieved. You call him Starbane, and he calls himself Starbane, I understand, but he has many names. 
To me, he will always be the hero of Gideon Prime, the one who saved my homeworld. Yes. He is the great uplifter. He has risen many planets to technology they didn't possess. He has lifted their culture. At he is the reclaimer. Cost? The that cost is, of Hadar? No, the cost is of personal freedoms in exchange for service, for a greater, safer galaxy. Gideon Prime, I remember now. That's why it sounds so familiar. Your planet is thriving, isn't it? Indeed. It was not once. It was threatened by... We call it... Uh, I'm trying to think. A common name for it is an abyssal dreadnought. It is a servant of Hadar. It is a, a, a thing it creates by... Uh, from its malicious will. It seeks only to consume planets. One attacked my homeworld long, long ago. And that is when the Emperor's great ships appeared in the vast astral space. They suffered huge losses, pulling it away, saving my world. And eventually they destroyed it. The Emperor himself was the one who delivered the final blow, inside of its own stomach. That is why I'm a Knight of Gideon. It is the highest honor of my planet to ascend, to be so martially trained, practiced in magic and technology, to serve the Emperor in the manner that I do. I do not say this to preach, but to give you understanding. I understand. You have been taught one thing of my world, of my emperor, and perhaps you have seen a darker side to what is necessary to control the galaxy. But it is necessary. Of that, I have unshakable will. So all that death and solving was necessary. I do not relish death in war. War is nothing to ever be celebrated. But if we do not all fight, if, we, if a planet tries to hide, tries to be independent, it weakens everything else. There, are, there is more to it than that. If Aroes was to remain free because your goddess wished it. What of the other planets in the galaxy that are unhappy with things? Should they be let free? What if we need their troops, their resources, their weapons? What right do you have? The right to protect. Without the Emperor, the Craven Star will not stop. It will consume this world, it will consume you, it will consume the next. It will consume the very space between the stars. It is not a pleasant thing my emperor does. I understand this. But I have no doubt that it is necessary. But let us put these matters aside for now and focus on the current situation at hand. Nothing has broken through your friend, so I'm assuming that perhaps we may be safe to emerge and make our way inside the deeper city. Okay, so we return the Echo to the Herald. Mm. Hopefully, that will restore whatever goodness is inside it. Hopefully. I wonder if we have to incapacitate you the Herald. You do. Like, I'll yeah. say this a century, it needs to be incapacitated. You need to make it unconscious or dying, effectively. You will need to... Put it at zero hit points. <laughs> <laughs> Just to we break to break the, to break the immersion for a little bit. You don't get out of it that easy. You okay. still have to fight it. In that case, keep it hidden while it's still keep it secret. Yeah. Keep, while it's still aware. We don't yeah. want it to corrupt it in its wakened state. Okay. We bring it to it when it's unconscious. Yep. Um, well it's just be... gonna float by sentry. It doesn't seem to want to leave sentry's side. Okay. Good. Where's the pseudo dragon? Let me. No. Stayed on the ship. ship. Cool. Sniffing out my quarters. Cool. What lines my quarters? <laughs> I'm gonna be in jail soon. Um. <laughs> but which one? Gideon Prime Jail. Fucking nice. <laughs> oh, it's nice up there. It's nice. I don't have jails anymore. I give you mobile phones and everything. It's pretty. It's five G. <laughs> do what I like. Nobody questioned how you do it. I know, right? <laughs> I laid it right out there. All right. There's a mochi hair on my cake. Yeah, nice. it's a little gift. <laughs> um, okay. 
So how do we get the Herald to come to us then? Ideally, we don't want to go to it. I mean, it's a big red light flashing in the sky. Do we just make ourselves known? Or... Also, fighting with glass surrounding us, it might be quite difficult to understand where the walls are. Yeah, we need to get it somewhere open. We could lead it. There is not far from here. There is a, a decent place for combat. There's an old temple, I believe, to one of your gods. Would we not be surrounded by feral guardians if we make a noise? Likely. If you wish to try and draw it to you, that will attract attention. But there are more of us now. What do we know? If you wish to handle the Herald, Dana and myself could try and hold back any others that approach. Oh, yeah. And we're going to make a lot of noise. Yeah. Mm. That That's makes sense. A lot of them. Yes. I'm okay. okay with that plan. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I guess let's go to the temple. It's a good way to single it out for at least as long as we need to be singled out for. Um, Very well. Come. I worry for you, Sentry. It's managed to create a pile of guardians, a throne almost, as if it's able to persuade that what this guardian is doing is the right thing. Yeah. So just be sure that the words that they speak, don't let them get to you. I will, thank you. Uh, can I suggest we maybe take a little rest first? That's a good idea. A short rest. I personally would like a longer rest, but... You know. I don't know, eight hours. It's quite dark well, outside start, as well. Start rolling up that nice random encounters, let's see if they find you. <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> come on. Look at that roll. <laughs> mm, I can roll it. Just roll. let me do it, let me do it. I want to roll it, come on, come on. I'll tuck up next to these uh, <laughs> killed corpses. <laughs> Kill corpses. Mm. So what's the plan? You want to take a short rest? You want to take a long rest? What do you want to do? What do you need, mm? Nova? Spooky well, time. if I do a short rest, I get all my spell slots back. If I do a long rest, Ooh. HP, levitate slow, and two, two? <laughs> levitate and slow. Meh. Who needs them? <laughs> I think my tomb's back. Eh. Eh. It's short rest. How injured are most of you? I have 40 out of 56. I'm tip top. Top top. 56 about out of 20 down. You're about 20 down and you're... Uh, 50, uh, so I'm only like 10 down. You're only 10 now down? with the, the lay on hands. Maximilian will oh. speak a word. Uh-oh. Oh my god, he's healing us. He will. What the hell? A little bit of healing, he can't do much. Six. It's like Starbeam's in you. <laughs> <laughs> Sentry, you are the most injured. Nine hit points back. Oh, thank you, Agent of and, Starbane. And he literally, yeah, you just see him close his eyes and he speaks, um, he speaks like a, a word in an old language. Uh, not co It's common, but it, it's obviously from another world. Um, and this, you, you feel like this world. wave of healing energy hit you. Mm. Um, thank you. You are welcome. If we are to battle, you should be in as best a condition as you can be. Are you taking some time to rest? I wouldn't mind a short, a little, a little bub. We can actually update Ayla on the situation <laughs> with the messenger ring. Yeah. I, mean, I guess she heard that and anything else that we said through the messenger yeah, ring. Yeah, I'm sure it was weird um, fragments though. Like, yeah, yeah, I think messenger ring Ayla is like, yeah, I got most of it. Like, I think there's still some monsters out here, but most of them are leaving now. Well, I've, I've mended the crossbar. You want me to come down? Yes, let's take a short rest. Okay. Who are you talking to, by the way? Oh, uh, Forces of Starbane. Uh, Dana is like, oh shit, there's another one coming. Um, and then Ada kind of like appears. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Who's this guy? <laughs> uh, it's okay, it's okay. This is Maximilian, this is Dana. Um, They're Starbane people. They are, they are. But. Are you okay with this? It's, well, it's, I'm gonna have okay, to. Okay, you're be... not okay with it, but you're willing to be I'm okay. I'm willing to be okay with this, yes. As long as Sentry's okay with They're us. They're willing to help us with our goal. Okay. And we're willing to help them with... We share a goal. He's a big guy. I like his sword. Okay. Don't... <laughs> no threats. We're... 
for the time being. She's a bit allies. of a feisty one, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, she's a delight. Um, <laughs> let's have a little rest. Sure. Before we head up. And then figure out how to get to this temple and fight Hadar Touched Herald. Oh boy. Does it smell of corpse in this room? It weirdly doesn't. There's some, yeah, it's like maybe the nature of the room, but the smell isn't there. There's how blood many, and bodies. How many bodies are there? It's like eight, nine. But yeah. Is there but, like a side room? But they're like, they're preserved almost, right? All right. Do they look like eight or nine low level scrubs? They look like a mixture of technicians scientists. or like scientists and then guards, basically. Okay. Like, like well armed, well armored guards. Are there any like Starbane iPads or anything around? Nothing. Only he no. already said that they were either broken or he's reclaimed them. So Maximilian's got any. He's not going to leave the intel around. Just not just juicy. Like, I lost all my shit on the ship. I got to no. rebuild my collection. No. <laughs> I wonder if um, it was the Herald that tried to come back and reclaim Echo. That caused this. Maybe it was. Well, I don't know. But couldn't get through its own. Maybe. Protection. Could be. Unfortunately, it's difficult to tell. I do think that there were more than one creature in here when I examined the bodies. They've been torn apart mainly, and whatever magic is in this room has preserved their bodies quite well. The plot thickens. Mm. I guess looking at the bodies, they're scratchy, they're teary, they're rippy, right? They're real dead, boys. They're real dead. Yeah. Big thing? But like crunchy dead. No, it looks like lots of small things. Like okay. lots of man sized things have yeah. gone feral. I was trying to figure yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. It's, you, you, yeah, it's not hard to figure out. Okay, cool. Cool. All right, so you take a short rest. You can take a short rest if you want. <laughs> yes, please. Why not? Um, I think Maximilian would go over to Nova while you're resting. Oh, hey, I'm trying to rest here, buddy. I'm resting here. I'm resting hey, here. Hey, buddy. Let me just press the button and then like... I don't think I get anything for short rest. I actually have no hit dice. You can spend hit dice. <laughs> I'm already at max. I was wondering right. if there was anything I'll that resets. All of mine. Nope. Like feats or anything? Nope. You can spend your sorcery points if you want to get spell slots back, but you can do that anytime. I'm all good! I think you use cantrips okay. mainly. I get yeah. magic slots. I was min-maxing that last combat. And tombies and... Um, does Ayla have any hit dice left? Hex stuff. She's got one. Let's spend it. Why not? Why not? Sorry, Katie. My uh, my Hadar Six Starbane plus is four is ten. His drive to conquer and I think they're brothers. They're not brothers. <laughs> <laughs> they are not brothers. <laughs> and also, that's weird. Do you think that was weird. <laughs> Starbane is Hadar's brother? <laughs> brother. <Brada. laughs> Hadar don't, brother. Don't do that. I <laughs> <That was laughs> said it. <laughs> Rot. It was one of those times where I started doing that and I was like, this is fucking weird. <laughs> this is fucking weird. I'm going to describe I've committed to this podcast. now, it's too late. <laughs> also brothers. <laughs> I know, right? What the fuck? Where did that come from? Do you want to describe that action I'm, for the podcast? You don't get the wrong oh. point now, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maximilian walks away. No! Shit. It's because I'm an only child. <laughs> right. Cool. So after your short rest. No, seriously, you're not dead. No, 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 come on. No, I, it wasn't, I was literally just going to be like, oh, so you're Nova Vigem. I have, yeah, mm. it wasn't going to be anything. It's just going to wind me up even more, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, fuck's <laughs> sake. It's my like secret symbol I can do. After your short rest, make your way upstairs. Listen, Rama is like, who are these people? You give him the gist. He's like, okay, <laughs> let's go stop a crazy guardian. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you listen, and it doesn't sound like there are any feral guardians out there for the time being. Um, Dana goes up to your where you made the crossbar, and gets a finger, and you see like an intense flame kind of encapsulates it, and she just <laughs> through your like <laughs> nice Ching. blue torch finger. <laughs> now you see where the lock was broke. Because <laughs> uh, there was two of them. <laughs> <laughs> and it opens up, and then yeah, you creep your way out. Um, Maximilian actually leads you, and he seems to have no trouble seeing at night time, even though he you know, looks humanoid mainly. Um, the two of them lead you through the city streets to a part of a, the ruined city where parts of it do begin to border on the glass city. 
Um, but what you see is a large open plaza with kind of broken bits of iron fencing, various columns and buildings surrounding it. But at the end, there is a kind of risen up stone platform that leads to a temple of Siaska. And you can see um, there's not just a temple of Siaska, but century you would recognize. You'd be the only one to recognize this that there is a large uh, like glass stained window at the front of the temple, which has miraculously survived somehow, cool. probably enhanced by magic. Mm. But it depicts Queen Astoria of Solvin reaching up with a wand, and Siaska is touching the tip of the wand, very Sistine Chapel-esque. Oh. Um, but she's kind of reaching the wand up, her long kind of flowing hair falling down, um, this being the queen region of the Solvin region, the exalted. I can't, like, um, stop. Like, in my... Like, just stop walking for a second and just look at it. Mm. And just... What's, take it in. What's that, Sentry? It's, it's the queen of Solvin. It's, it's her. Oh, so you're... You were employed by her? Yeah. Ah, you were a servant of the crown. I was. Mm. I think he, like, looks up. Nods. Takes a moment. Doesn't say anything. Lets you kind of have a moment. What is the um, what is her wand? It, it's just like her symbol because she was she was a mage. She was a wizard. She was like, you know, that was her uh, like rather than a sword. It was like her symbol of authority was this rod. Right. Yeah. Anti feral wand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's nothing. I mean, it is something, but it's. Like, Sentry, I don't think, like, you wouldn't know the specific details of it. No. It's just her legendary... It's what she, she had. Well, she had, like, it's, it's a powerful magic yeah. card, but you don't know what it's called and stuff no. like that. But Queen Astoria carried this powerful rod into battle and stuff. Yeah. One day. It yeah. will be mine. That's definitely a thing which you could look for if you wanted. It will be mine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, you, he leads you there and he points out, he's like, the buildings here create something of a... More defensible position. They can't reach around the back of the temple. There is a large ravine back there, which means they have to come from this direction or this direction. Um, oh, obviously, the Herald can fly, but her any ground-based <coughs> creatures would need to come from these directions. I can block off one of the directions with a magic circle. Hmm. You could certainly try. Um, I mean, they're undead, right? The uh, guardians and the spirits. Yes, yes. Um, so that's How? one side covered. How wide can this circle be? The main concourse is very wide. I'm not sure. Wide enough. Concourse is about 10 feet by 10 feet, right? No. You can probably block off like an alleyway with it. I can do it as a 20 foot tall cylinder. Could I just do it as a cylinder on its side? Even then, 20 feet isn't that big. Again, you can block off like a side street with this thing at best. It's something. It's something. I mean, and yeah, you in theory, I don't see any reason you couldn't put the magic circle on a wall so yeah. that the, the So could I cover a twenty foot distance with a magic sure. circle? Yeah, you paint a magic circle on a wall. So on the on this map here that you can see before you. Sure. Okay. Uh no. So these areas, imagine that this big stone is like a part of a building. These are like side streets. Oh, okay, so you can And then you this. have the main concourse down there. Right. Everything, so basically the enemies can come from these t- four side streets oh, four. or that concourse. Mm. Um, mm. Okay, and I can block off about two thirds of one of those four. <laughs> like half of it. Yeah. I, I would, for, don't worry too much about the map li- distance. You can block off any one of those side streets. Okay. Do it. Magic circle. I mean, Which help. one would you like to block off? Um, I guess... We're going to be here, right? We're going to be like in the middle fighting this thing. So I guess there's still a chance of stuff coming from behind us, right? Or... This side, no. Not from here. This side. They can, that's the main concourse, the main yeah. Concourse. So I'm going to put your, like, a spiritual weapon. So which one do you want to block off? Oh, uh, that one. This one? All right, okay. So cool. it's blocked off. Dan is like, I can block off one with a wall of fire. That should keep out most of the, the base guardians. Uh, Glass people, maybe not. Yes, the spirits will be more difficult, but perhaps they won't come. Mm. Anyone else got any walls? I can concentrate a moonbeam. Uh, I could. Con- remember, remember that you will likely need to focus on the herald. Yeah, I, I could conjure a fire elemental. I think. Yes, that would be most useful. Perhaps away from this specific area, uh, down the street, perhaps. Elementals have a habit of breaking free of control. Yeah, I don't really know how much I can control. Just let it take attention up up here somewhere, maybe. 
Yes. Okay. Or perhaps wait for the, once we know where they're coming from, let one loose down a side street and hopefully it will be drawn away by the guardians. That is a clever tactic. Okay. I'll take out the red crystal that I got from somewhere. Yep, I remember where you got it from, don't worry. Uh... So, so shall I summon it, summon it now, or, or when we know? No, I would wait until they are upon us. Yes, use it. Just in case uh, we lose control. Yeah. Do, do you want it to... So I can talk to Maximilian. Why? You would trust me with this. Well, we are fighting on the same side, and I'm kind of... I'm stood in front of him, and I kind of try and give him, like, a really sly wink, like... My people have an affinity with fire. It will help. If you trust me. Team, you know me. Ah, you said he wasn't going to hurt us. Until the next time we meet. No. Uh -huh. I will use it now, I assure you. Here. Takes it, mark it off your sheet. Puts it like into like a component on of his belt. Um, very well. Uh, if you have a plan to draw her attention, if she knows you have the echo. Mm. I imagine that will draw it. Yeah. I will take my position, and he gestures to a side street. Dana, come with, you will take on another one. We will do our best to buy you as much time as possible. Okay. I suggest you deal with it quickly. As quick as we can. So, he is gonna mark off a corridor here. Denver is going to mark off a corridor here. Okay, so the entire east side is blocked by them. And then basically, I'm going to wait until it actually happens, but Danner is also going to create a wall of fire on this side. Nice. Okay, so pretty much every entrance blocked. Yeah. And it'll basically extend. Apart from this there. big old Apart boy. Apart from on the area behind us where we came in. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's fine. And then, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, what'd you do? Do you want to take any more prep? Ada is like, Cool. <laughs> we're ready. Send. Do you want to position yourself? Okay. Uh, Rammer as well will actually back up um, Dana because he's like, listen, you're fighting some sort of crazy guardian angel woman. I'm going to go with that strange looking dwarf woman <coughs> and help her because I don't think I'm going to be much use. Okay. Fair um, enough. If that's all right. I, Sir. I might go distancey. Pew, pew, pew. That's okay. my plan. I will be within. Spell shot of you, Sentry. Okay. What if we all hide so Sentry is the central figure and then we can maybe jump it? Okay. It could be the surprise element, yes. Yeah. In that case, I'm here. Should we all go up into the actual. What is this building up here? It's the temple. Okay. It's ruined. It's partially collapsed, but. I, mean, I suppose we could all hang out. So you're just hiding behind the fountain. Okay. A bit of high ground. I have the high ground now! <laughs> I would, uh, yeah, generally those two side streets are going to be swarming with enemies. I would not position yourself near those side streets where they are defending. Uh, sure. Uh, does the temple look pretty empty? Like... It's empty, but it's dilapidated and it's all open. Okay. Once you're in, there's not really room to fight What's inside. It? It's like here. a shrine more than an actual yep. big temple. Can I go maybe by the entrance? It's like up here. Yeah. So wherever you want. Yeah. Okay, so we're you all guys tell Ayla where to go. You guys decide where you want to go. Push this back a little. Yeah. If you just Ayla, I believe you should. Huh? Back up Sentry when you can. Okay. As soon as. As soon as I see it, I smash. Yes. Yes. Great. Stay within. Smashing distance of us. Yes. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, Sentry. Yep. I think this is you now. Okay. Right. What do you do, Sentry? Um. I guess I'll just hold the echo above my head, just the loft. Harold, I have your echo. He's shouting out. Yeah. Come and claim him. If you want him, come and claim him. Nice. You're dead. Insta-killed. The, the glass insta -killed. Laser, laser, laser on the forehead. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess, I guess I'll cast Moonbeam as well, like just in front of me. So it just makes, like, so it makes like a beacon. Okay, oh, so you're using it as a beacon. A beacon okay. to come yeah, find that, well, that will definitely work. Uh, like, Herald, I have your echo! Boom! Moonbeam! Yeah, nice. absolutely. Yeah. Better than lightning. Yeah. <laughs> Bigger, um, too. Louder. Lightning's louder. Yeah, no, lightning no. is a lot louder, actually. I imagine Moonbeam sounds like... Moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's like okay. a nice... That's just not a moon. It's a cradle beam, isn't moon. it? <laughs> no moon. I am the moon. <laughs> I am the moon. Everybody look at the moon. 
Oh. <laughs> Serious. The beam of light from the spell echoes up into the sky, the dark night sky. Only the soft, multicolored hue of the cradle casts any light in this area and the roaring flames of the wall of fire. As you call it out, I have your echo. Mournful wail. <gasps> Echoes. Moments pass. Minutes turn into nearly an hour. And you begin to hear. Scraping, crawling. Sounds of anguished cries and screams. There's dozens of feral guardians, 40, 50 of them, come pouring in from all different directions, hundreds. Some of them slam up against the magic circle's sphere, unable to comprehend why they can't get past it, trying to scramble up the walls. Several of them pushed back by the wall of flames. Dozen more come towards the side. Maximilian turns to all of you as a rushing tide of these feral guardians comes towards him. He kind of gets the sword ready, slams it once against his armor, and the blade erupts into a green flame. Oh, green frame break! He turns to all of you, raises the sword in like a salute. Praxis fall! And then he charges towards the enemies, and he begins oh. launching into it. And you know what, fuck it, I'm starving now. <laughs> <laughs> so Come on, cool. right? It's so easy. You see Dana. <laughs> More of these guardians rush towards the Durgar woman, the dwarf, and she, you just watch as her eyes burst into like roaring embers. She actually lifts off the ground as her feet and body is erupted in flame. And she just, as these bolts of flame come launching out of her, soar, scoring into the fields. Rama does his best, any they get close to her, he's just trying to fight them off, like stabbing them in the back as they're distracted. Gun explodes. He's in the thick of it. <laughs> he is, yeah. But for all of you, there is something far, far more immediate. Here we go, here we go, here we, here we go, yo. Oh, shit. Here she is. Oh, no. Oh, that's I'm a really sure cool mini. Up. So that's high. That's an angelic mini with a reaper. That's Let's, welcome. Uh, this size. is the guardian thing. Can you put these figures? Oh, there's the more than just her. Yeah. Yes. What's Sentry, that? you are immediately drawn. Guardian. First of all, you hear the beating of these wings, these kind of pulsing energy sounds. <laughs> as you see this floating guardian, her body once lithe is now almost seems gaunt for a guardian's, skeletal almost. Mm. These tattered robes hang off of her that she didn't have, almost like a trailing ribbons of dark cloth as she holds in her hands a staff that's been augmented now with a serrated scythe blade. Oh. And she just floats, the red eye looks down. No. Destroy it. Take that thing away. Why have you brought it here? You, the successor. You can't be here. You'll ruin everything. No! Oh, Rook! God. She points down the street and Sentry, more than her, you see three guardians uh -oh. on either side of a, another guardian, a figure. And it's one you know. Oh, shit. An imposing, tall, muscular guardian with a kind of metal crown studded onto his head. Oh, fuck. Wearing the tabard of Solvin, a broken royal shield in his hands, and a sword that to all of you appears beautiful, a mithril perfect blade, golden hilt entwined leaves and vines, and as a pommel, a ruby carved like a rose. You don't need to make a check to know what this is. This sword is a na is, has a name and a twin. It's called Her Majesty's Rose. Only two of them were ever made, both by Queen Astoria herself of Solvin and given to her royal guards. This guardian you see before you is called Rook, and he was a mentor, he was a superior in Solvin. He is a royal guard of Solvin. 
and lurching, stumbling, his robe tattered, his tabard tattered as he stumbles, just like the rest of these ferals. <sighs> Kill them! Kill them all! And that's when we roll initiative. Oh, oh shit! This is so <laughs> fucking cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what was your? Just rolled it into your pile. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? Holy yeah, shit! Nice nah, I'll count it. I'm so okay. scared. Um. Oh. Eighteen. Ah, Her Majesty's rose. That's oh, cool. Fuck. This is awesome. I want a ruby pommel. Oh. One day. <laughs> it <would be> mine. <laughs> I have the wand of Astoria, the sword of Astoria. Yeah, I need it all. Hexblade yeah. Warlock! You can't go again! That really uh, wouldn't trigger you, would it, Sentry? <laughs> like, just seeing that thing everywhere! Maybe, maybe get the hint that Mark's trying to give Sentry a cool thing. <laughs> you know what, this suits right. Lucy. <laughs> I think Ayla could do with it though, right? Sentry, initiative. Nine. Nine. Ayla, which I've not rolled yet. Uh, 17. I like how he's Quill. Brook. 13. He's cool. Yeah. Nova. 18. Chess piece. Yeah, Lucius. Um, 16. Where's Bishop? Hey, maybe that's the other royal guard. Oh, shit. Oh. Are these just pawns? Nice. No, they, these aren't named. These are just random guardians. They all look different as well. They're kind of like a mix of scouts and laborers and everything else, but he. I mean, you can tell this guy is different. Just the way he's built, the way he moves, everything about him. It looks like Sentry. It almost looks like a version of Sentry in a way. We burned. Uh, the first one to go is the Herald. Oh my oh, god, what? Shit. <laughs> what oh, did god. you roll? <laughs> 21 for her initiative. Oh, oh. Our initiatives are always bad. Yeah, this yeah. is one of my better ones too. <laughs> Slow would have been real good on this. <laughs> Herald comes flying in. Oh, has she uh, uh, seen us? Um, probably. Okay, I was just wondering if we did Are you going to did say you wanted to hide? Make yeah. stealth checks. Um, yeah, she's seen me. Yeah, probably seen me. Eight. Eight? I got like two, four. She's seen Ayla. Nineteen. Nineteen. She hasn't seen Lucius. Nice. Oh, I know Sid, don't worry. I just want to... Get a little bit in. Oh, like we've got to wrap the up in ten minutes. Dist. Oh yeah. Um, we're going to take a picture of this so we can carry it on, so we can kick off a nice time. So I think that we're going to kick things oh, off. Oh, sure. um, she, the herald, looks around, sees Sentry. You have brought, you have brought your own pawns. Yes, yes. I will make them fight for me. Nova, make a wisdom saving throw. GG. Yeah. Mind control. Um. Or dominate mind. Dominant mind. Is it a spell? <laughs> yes. Sounds spelly spell? to me. You can't spell, you can counter spell. Yeah, and I have counter spell. Do you? Yeah. Do you want to try counter spelling? Fuck it, YOLO. Let's do it. Okay, you will need to roll a d20 and add your charisma modifier as it is above third level. Okay, charisma modifier. It's fourth level. Casting it. Oh, it's above fourth level. Oh damn. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm casting it at fourth level, yeah, okay. So. Yeah, you roll the d20, add your charisma mod. Mod, not saving throw. Nope. Okay. Modifier. It's not a saving throw. This is to see if you can counter spell it. Ten! So ten total? Mm hmm Okay, nope, it doesn't counter spell it. So now make a wisdom saving throw. You try it. Eighteen. Eighteen. That is gonna be enough, I yeah. think, just. You feel sh this imposing will try and drive you to act under her commands. And you almost feel your hand reaching up, almost beginning to conjure the magic. And then you just remember that explosion and Sentry's face as she was thrown out. And that gives you the strength to like, no, and you resist. I use the power of PTSD, everybody. <laughs> it was the power of friendship. Yeah. <laughs> Friend. <laughs> Nova. That's a good block. Yeah. It's your game. Oh, still me. <laughs> Shit. The... Um. And you're way at the top by the temple. Speak French. Man, she's flying high. Uh. Twenty-five. Mm, Kit and Nova. Yeah. At the start of your turn, can you make a wisdom saving throw, please? Oh, that, really? Again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Has she got some, some kind of like aura? Must do. Maybe. Eighteen. Maybe. Eighteen. So again. Just while she forcibly tries to get you to do as she commands, you feel this presence just around her. Mm. Yes. That it's hard to focus 
you start seeing Sentry as as a feral guardian. You're not sure if you should attack him, but you, you're like, no, no, I, I know, I know that's my friend. Like, it's it's almost like it's uh, causing madness around you, and you're not sure uh, who you can attack. Like an aura effect around her. Pretty cool. You okay? Okay. Is this 120 feet away? I mean, probably not. What the dudes? The at the end. Yeah, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, yeah, 70, 5, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110, 115, 120. It's out of range. Yeah, five spaces. Oh, motherfuckers. Um. In which case, Nudge five, four, I'm gonna. Um... Oh. What? Yeah. Sorry, I just heard what you said. If I go forward. You gotta go down the yes. steps. Yes. So. You got... can move. Yeah. yeah. I can move, guys. <laughs> uh, do you know what? No, screw it. In the, I think just as a reaction, because she's tried to yeah. um, boot me, I'm gonna boot her back with Eldritch Blast. Okay, just, sure. Which is. Two beams, two beams. That was cocked. Sure. 15 plus 8, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. That will hit. 8 plus 8 is 16. The 16 will not hit. Okay. She, her wings pull her to the side. She dodges. Um, 1d10. 2 points of damage. So you just graze, uh, not even really hitting her, but causing her to kind of expend some energy as she moves out of the way. Um, yep. You done? Would you like yeah. to move? Um, can I move? Uh, I'm just going to start going, I think, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, fell down the stairs. Down the stairs. Uh, okay, so you begin moving that way, yeah? Nice. All right, you hear the sounds of fighting coming from Maximilian's direction, um, but it is now 8, let's go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. She does not start in the aura. Um, the Ayla like points up in the air and is like, flying. Yeah. <laughs> she can only do that once. That's the oh, only right. problem. Yeah. yeah, she can only throw it once. She's like, yeah, yeah. they're gonna go back up Sentry. Yeah. Can she just delay a turn or something? Yeah. Ten. Hold an action. She can hold an action, but she's, she should move first. Yeah. So she's gonna move next to Sentry, and then she will ready an action that if it comes within range, if any. Hostile creature comes in range, she's going to attack it. Cool. Um, after Ayla, we go to Lucius, Virian, Elowin, and Anastar. I assume I do a wisdom saving throw. Um, yeah, you will. Wisdom saving throw, please. Ugh. Seven. Uh, seven, okay. Uh, you must make a attack action against one uh, creature within ranged, or if it's not within melee ranged, a ranged attack. So this will be one of your cantrips. And it'll be a random creature in range. So what's your acid splash range? Wait, what's that? 30 feet, I think. 30 feet. What's firebolt's range? 60 range? feet. 60 feet. So that's going to be in range. No, it's going to be in range. Cool. It's going to be in range. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's see who you attack. Wait, Lucius, wait, what? I found a saving throw. Oh, what's it like that one turn? Make a uh, firebolt attack. Oh, uh, no, uh, acid splash against sentry, please. Which will also hit Ayla, technically. We. Alright. Well, that also technically Although I am effect. spell resistant. Ten. Uh, Magic resist. Yeah, that would do the half damage. Okay. So ten to hit, hit misses, and then acid splash. I think you can hit Ayla as well. Um, it's two hit. targets. Oh, it's uh, deck oh, saving it's, throw. Oh, deck saving throw. Sorry, you need so to do deck saving, saving throw for sentry. Ayla passes. Oh. Excuse me. It's against a uh, fifteen. Not twenty. Oh. <laughs> so you kind of feel yourself forced to like make this attack against your allies, thinking that they're feral guardians or confusing them in the, in the thing, but they both manage to resist. Okay. And that's me, so right? She can force immediately take the attack action. Yep. You've still got movement and bonus actions. I'm going to push myself and away. And you kind of realize that you're, yeah, like this area around her is this swirling, confusing mess. Does it oh. feel better here? Uh, once you are more than 30 <laughs> feet away from her. Okay. So I would, yeah, potentially move as much as you can. It seems it's got mass That's money. That's gonna be a real control. pain in the yeah. ass. Yeah, for melee. <laughs> can you rush the three normal dudes, basically sixty feet? Okay. I made this map way too big. That's cool. Yeah, no. that's, good. Um, that's good. I like having a big map. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's that's they're, their whole turn as they rush forward. So they're all feral guardians, right? Those look like, not the ones you fought before, these ones actually look a little bit more put together, like they've been maintained. Okay. Mm. And you can see that they have these arm blades, basically like oh, swords cool. that come out of their cool. forearms. Cool, 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 cool. Army. cool. One day. <laughs> <laughs> that will be mine. <laughs> You hear sounds coming from Dana, but again, I'm not going to worry too much about that in the combat. Uh, and then we go to Quillock and Kolar. We're going to get one round of combat in, and then we'll probably wrap it up. Uh, I would like to cast Hold Person on her. Is a uh, question before I do that. Mm. Her wings, are they actually flapping and keeping her aloft? They don't flap. They kind of move in like a weird, glitchy manner. Almost like um, fighter jet wings. Like they kind of like... Psh, psh, yeah, I'll do a hold person anyway. Okay. I was wondering if that would then make her tumble to the ground. Well, no, I've seen this before, actually. She rolled a five. Oh, really? Well, she has advantage, luckily. So that's one of her rolls. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, she has advantage on saving throws against spells and magical effects. Not this one, though. So I've seen it. So that one was a five. That one's a and five. And now I roll the advantage, uh -huh. which was a 13. Uh, and what's I'm saving against? Wisdom? Uh, yes. That's a 20. <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Plus seven on that. Yeah. Well, uh, well so you, my go to, gone. you try to grab her in this hold, and just whatever magic about her, what her matrix just rebuffs the spell. It just poof, almost dissipates it in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Burned my portent, damn it, and a level three spell. Yeah, level yeah. three for whole person? Mm -hmm. Uh. Yeah, I think it so. might be. Um, this is the one I really wanted. Sentry. Hello. What would you like to do? Uh, oh, do I need to make a saving throw? Uh, I believe you will, yes. She's currently, we'll say that she's 30. No, she's actually, no, because <laughs> Lucius and Nova are up higher, which is why I affected them. She's about 40 feet up in the air. Okay. So currently you and Ayla don't. Okay, dog. She'll probably get lower. Yeah, cool. Cool. I will then, I will cast a moonbeam on her because my other one's gone, so I'll... Do okay. another one and so focus that on do? her. So that'll be a con 13 save. Okay. She has magic resistance, so I have advantage for a 22. Yeah. You did it. Take half damage or? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Is it, if it fails, or is it, it takes 2d10 radio damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a success. Yeah, so it's 1d10. Yeah, that's a good idea. Ba -ba well, roll 2d10 and then just half. Okay. <coughs> That would have been 15, so... 15 is half to 7. 7. So this radiant energy kind of barrels down on top of her from above and you're maintaining the concentration, but she yeah. doesn't seem too bothered. It almost kind of makes her more sinister as she's bathed in this radiant mm. moonlight and she just kind of looms over you all. Cool, cool, cool. Would you like to move anywhere? Um, I probably should, shouldn't I? Um, I guess I'll move... Uh, wait, move back here a bit more. Let's go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, maybe like there. Okay. I'll take that with me. Yeah, he just follows you. Cool. So I'll okay. go there. Mm. Can you move uh, Rook at the end there? Move him. In fact, actually, uh, you watch as he brings the Her Majesty's Rose up and his form seems to get very fast. Oh. So he can dash as a bonus action. So can you move him 30 feet for me? Okay. And then another 30 feet as his move. And then another 30 feet, yeah. As his move, and then... Mm, he needs to get into melee to do either of those things. Oh, cool. So he will use just his action to dash and now basically get next to sentry. So he rushes in front of sentry. Can he action dash, bonus action dash? Yeah, because he expeditious retreated, so... Bastard, I do that one. Uh, he would just go forward like this. He'd go like 5, 10, 15, oh, I see. 20, so 20 25, 30. Right in front of sentry. And he basically like... Hey. And you just get the clash of blades as the Majesty's Rose and the Battle Axe like... And you look at him and you see this... The face of somebody you knew. This isn't yeah. just like a faceless guardian. This is... You remember him going about his duties, protecting the queen. It was, you know, admiration almost. Yeah. You know, you protected the princess, he protected the queen. But that recognition is almost gone. And as he gets close to you, this kind of distraught face, the, the power from his eyes is almost gone, but he moves with rapidity and, and vitality. 
And as it kind of gets in close, as your blades are locked, you just hear, like, repeating under his breath. Find the bright, 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 find the bright. It's just endless. Just repeating constantly. Oh, shit. Needs a reboot. And that's where we're going to end today. Damn. Oh, boy. Damn. Yeah. So next week, we will be starting in this combat. epic combat. Oh, man. Awesome. This we're, is hard. This, Happy uh, birthday to us. It's a lot more spooky <laughs> than I thought. It was going to be. That's awesome. Yeah, oh, amazing. Yeah. So cool. cool. GG Mark. Somebody read some stuff. Hey, wow, Lightning Winged Dragon. Do my, I'm going to tidy up quicker today. <laughs> sure. Hey, Lightning Winged Dragon. Wow, thank you for your donation. Sure. Hi, Mark. Here is a filler donation. We. Oh, it was Kim. meant to be for the break. Can right. you take pictures of all this, please? Raven Moor. The Year of the Stars continues. This episode, our heroes fight to the center of a ruined metropolis filled with the undead to fight a mecha beholder. Wait, that's the wrong campaign. Oh well, keep up the good work. I think that was um, First Light in Lightfall. Yeah. Um, I put my, my ass in front of the camera, it's false. Uh, big $30 donation from Delinadan. Happy birthday, boys and girls. Oh, wow. It's my birthday soon, and I want to know it's a long shot, but you're all invited uh, to go to Legoland with me for a party. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Legoland? Right there. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go now. Let me know. Love you all. Hmm. Oh, I've always wanted to go Lego then. Well, there you it's go. good. That's your invite. Um, what about the brownies? What? Oh, when I was really? in the brownies, yeah. God, <laughs> when what a little trip for the brownies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Pretty awesome. Uh, meme Queen the Mamer. Hello. Sorry, the song is delayed. Moving house. It's going to be done by March with a gift for all of you. Sub to Rhiannon chat for amazing felt art life. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's cursed. Uh, <laughs> is why is it cursed? It is so cursed. Natas with three T's. It's my dog, but it looks like a That's man. A dog. <laughs> it's like a dude's legs <laughs> just bending over. Uh, yeah, it's gone. I we lost a horse. <laughs> Kenku noises. <laughs> Kenku noise noises with uh, shatter. So I guess that's the noise that they get from this episode. Uh, I done it, Ken. Uh, Starbane liked max damage's Starbook update. Uh, Nova is a smart one. <laughs> Um, max damage? Is that...? Max damage? I don't know what they're talking about. Can you possibly... It's basically, I think it's like Maximilian yeah. updating the log. Going like, uh, nope, yeah. right. Hey, Kim, do you want to read some? Uh, thank you to Lightning and Dragon, <laughs> Kim, who says... Kim, do you fucking help? <laughs> ...a message from the VOD squad. Count how many times Mark said the word echo. Thank you. Uh, yeah, another one from Nightjar. Oh no, Maximilian is too cool. I like him. His Brookstone is gonna hurt so bad this fucking episode. Jeez, Such trauma. Much as well. imagery. Uh, thank you to Varys, who's donated a half hundo. Right, wow. thank you very um, much. Uh, and says, Happy fourth birthday to the High Rollers. Uh, a, a, a donation from Sabata Free, who does amazing uh, art for us. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, happy Girls birthday, High Rollers. Off. I always wish I could donate more as you guys deserve it. I want to give a special thanks for getting me into D&D. Shout out to Kim. Woo! Uh, as if as if it wasn't for the Lightfall highlight videos, I might have never started watching. Aww. Yeah, so Sabata Free posted up his character art on the D&D um, really? Reddit recently. We should read you a highlight of Eros if it got so buttery into Lightfall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, yeah. But it's because it was on Kim's channel as well. A quarter. Uh, yeah, well, I did highlights right at the beginning. A quarter hundo from Bandai Nenzai says, Happy birthday, High Rollers. This show has been the highlight of my week since the beginning ow. and has given me such a deep appreciation for D&D. Thank you for all your great stories and great RP. Awesome episode. Looking forward to next week. Thank we you. We also yes, have so 500 bits from Underworld Chris mm. and also a bunch of anonymous gift subs. Oh, thank you. Brought very to you kind. by Nightjar. This update thank has you, been Nightjar brought to you yeah. by Nightjar. Yeah, yeah thank Nightjar. Thank you very much. Thank you for keeping us advised. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Um, we will be back next week. Uh, let me come down here. We'll be back next week. Kate will be back, ready for this fun combat. <laughs> yeah. What a way to come back! Deep. Um, deep in big combat. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out World Anvil and D&D Beyond, the awesome sponsors for today's episode. Yeah. Up next on the Yogs, I think it's featured period streaming, so check that out. Nice. Old P Flex, give him our love. We'll see you next time. Tuesday, 8pm. Yeah. High Rollers, Twitch. Yeah. See, you, see you for that. Bye. Happy see birthday, you for that. Bye. 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 Bye.